It's time to shake and wake up the world with the best biblical talk shows from all over the world gathered in one place. ShakeandWakeRadio.com, where the truth is all that matters, and the truth will set you free. ShakeandWakeRadio.com. FOJC Radio, David and Donna Carrico, the dynamic duo of followers of Jesus Christ. Nah, we're just regular people. We're just loving and serving the Lord, and we challenge you to love and serve the Lord and learn all. Shalom and welcome to the Spiritual Warfare Friday. I'm your host, Dan Badani and Brian Reese. And today, the seven sages of Atlantis, gods and the ancients, uh, of the ancients, I'm sorry. So uh, we've got a lot to talk about tonight. And guys, if you notice already, we're broadcasting on a backup channel because we got dinged last week because somebody mentioned some word, that a keyword that got us dinged. So uh, so we got one one week, um, you know, slap on the hand. So, uh, so we'll be broadcasting on the main channel next week. So, um, and this will be be premiering on there as well so anyway uh welcome to spiritual warfare friday what's going on brian and uh this topic is gonna be very exciting yeah not much dan glad to be here on spiritual warfare friday the seven sages of atlantis gods of the ancients this is a topic up my alley dan so i'm mm -hmm. glad to be here and um looking forward to the program mm -hmm. absolutely so uh, yeah, again, the seven sages of Atlantis. Uh, we messed up <laughs> earlier. We messed up on the thumbnail. We, it was seven, the seven sagas. 
I don't know if anybody caught that. I, I think one person caught on to that, but whatever. We fixed it. So anyway, uh, well, I thank ShakeAwakeRadio.com for carrying our shows on the awesome, amazing network. And also, I'll thank you, BeforeIt'sNews.com. I'm a contributor right for them. We share our content on there as well. And so uh, we're going to start off with Atlantis. So uh, mytho- mythology of Atlantis, if you want to call it that. Uh, and again, and I want to uh, right off the bat, you know what I mean? Because you hear about mythology, folklore, things like that, right? And, um, you know, this the scientific community likes to add the tag mythology to it because what it does, it just dismisses anything, you know, because it's all true. It's all real history. The thing is, these uh, seven sages, all these ancient cultures, uh, with the, you know, the so-called gods were actually fallen angels and all that. But regardless, this is all real history, the stuff that really happened. And, you know, I mean, and, um, so today's society, they like to dismiss it as folklore or some kind of a mythology or whatever the case, you know, whatever uh, slang they want to put onto it just to try to dismiss the actual truth. Because, uh, and if they were to tell people, and here's the thing too, in high school, in um, your college, they teach about Greek mythology, right? Why would you teach about that if it's just mythology? You know, and uh, so there's a reason why they do this for, because uh, it's... Makes you passivist, basically. So basically, when these things come back to the earth, because the Bible says that they're coming back. Jesus says that when the things are coming back on the earth, they're going to make men's hearts fail. So as the days of Noah, so it's going to be like this, and that was before the flood, and, and also afterwards. So these things are going to happen again. And so why society, they dismiss it, and then they let it out, talk about it a little bit, but they bring it back, they put it into movies, all this predictive programming and all that, but yet they'll just say, uh, no, it's folklore, it's uh, some mythology and all that stuff, but it's real history that happened. And we're going to uncover a lot of the truth of this today because we've got so many channels out there, um, New Ages especially. Oh, man, do they run wild with this stuff because they'll take the teachings of these sages and as gospel, and uh, you know, you got the people in the occult as well, high levels of the occult, and there's that you know, certain uh, sects, religions, and all that stuff. They use certain parts of it, and it goes back to Babylon. You know what I mean? And, uh, and that's where it all goes back. And so, long story short, to save the confusion, because we're gonna go through a lot of ancient cultures. So I want to point this out before we get going. Uh, so what happened in Babylon, right? When Babylon split apart, you know, the people took different languages with them. And different tongues. So what they did is they took the same Babylonian religion and brought it with them. They brought splinters of Babylonian religion. So that's why you got these people out there. Oh, there's thousands of religions out there. How do you know yours is a true religion? Number one, we don't follow religion, but we follow the Bible. Anyway, but all these religions out there, the Eastern religions, hundreds of them, right? How do you know? You know, you, you know, I know how you know because when you take every single one of them, they all have one thing in common. They all come from Babylon. Every single one of them. So what they did is they took splinters of the Babylonian religion to their regions of the world. And of course, there's different names for the same people. And, you know, they they got different names and everything else because of the language and everything else. Uh, They got different names and all that, but the same people with the same stories. So that's how you, you know, I mean, when you narrow it all down, it comes from Babylon and all that. And ancient cities, and uh, yes, Atlantis was a real city. It's not something out of a movie uh, something that was made up out of Sp- Steven Spielberg's mind or something like that. Atlantis was real. Very real at that. So we're going to talk about, and it's not just going to be based on Atlantis today. We're going to go all over H- every Asian culture. Here's the thing, too. Every Asian culture across the world, every single one of them, all have stories of seven sages or seven um, magis or whatever. You know, they got different names for them, mainly sages, right? That help build their cities and all that stuff. All the same stories for these uh, seven people. That helped them build these ancient cities and everything else, right? So if these were just myth and all that, how would all these ancient cultures, hundreds of them, all have the same stories about the same beings, right? How would they do that if there was just myth and these people didn't even know each other? You know what I'm saying? So, and we're going to get to ancient technology. We're going to get, we just got to go down a deep rabbit hole with this stuff today. So, yeah, it's about Atlantis, but mainly about uh, these seven sages all together. We're going to go through uh, ancient Aztec, the Mayans, uh, China, uh, uh, the Greece, Rome, everywhere else across the world, even the Native Americans and all that stuff. So, we're going to go through all these histories as much as we can to try to explain this whole thing and to, you know, it's going to sound complicated at first, but we're going to simplify it at the end to show you exactly who they are, what their purpose was and everything else. And uh, no, it wasn't to help mankind. It was to <laughs> defy God mainly. So uh, we're going to get to this stuff. So, Brian, uh, what's going on, man? Not much, Dan. 
Uh, glad to be here. And um, yeah, I, I totally agree with everything you just said. I know if the evidence, here's what's so bad. Tonight we're going to be presenting um, quite a few things that are going to add all up together. And there's all, like you was talking about Babylon. Isn't it kind of interesting that academia would just shun all that mm -hmm. and say it doesn't exist and it's just folklore, mythical yeah. stuff, you know, urban legends. But it's interesting that, you know, researchers and people out there that want to take a deep dive and, and then deep put their deep thinking hat on, they can uh, really come together and dig up the dirt, so to speak, and plug in all of it together and and literally see that these direct connections with the seven sages of Atlantis, the Atlantean culture is inundated all throughout America, even to modern time. There's all kinds of evidence and it, it people just discredit it. They act like it's some kind of myth, you know, mythical, you know, legend that uh, doesn't, you know, it's just in a movie, like you said. So I am i can't wait to get into it. It's exciting. There's so many things that we can tie in with this, just this one topic. We could be here for five hours if we really wanted to on this certain, on this subject alone. So to modern time, yeah, man. Yeah. And if, guys, if you're watching on Rumble, I think it is it frozen again. I don't know what's going on Rumble, guys. So, um, Hang on, so let me put a thing in the chat. If it's frozen, we're on uh, on YouTube. So if you're watching on Rumble, guys, and you get to hear this, and you're watching it live, I'm putting a link in the chat room if you want to head over to our YouTube channel. Uh, because, it, yeah, it stinks. It really does. I don't know why Rumble does that. It works yeah, with a hard line, but the, the Wi-Fi just stinks, I guess. Yeah, I think, I think people are complaining about the YouTube chat not moving either. Yeah. Particular I don't know. There's, there's, the powers that be do not uh, want us to speak about this certain topic tonight. Yeah. <laughs> so anyway, yeah, Atlantis and you know the myth, of, you know, so-called mythical city and all that stuff. And they, of course, they made the Aquaman movies, the recent movies about Atlantis and everything else, and Poseidon. We could go down all those things, man. I tell you. Uh, but anyway, um, these divine beings, uh, famed from their uh, great building, the great builders basically expertise and taught mankind uh, illicit knowledge from heaven, the seven sacred sciences, right? So, but here's the thing: it's their version of that because God taught Adam and uh, Seth in Cana time the seven sacred knowledges, uh, seven sciences. I'm sorry, which is uh, grammar, logic, geometry, astronomy. Uh, rhetoric, arithmetic, and music. Yeah, I missed one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah I mentioned them all. So anyway, uh, God taught uh, Adam, um, Adam uh, these certain things, right? So you got the bastardized version, which is the twisted version, that the fallen angels and Cain, the evil Cain, uh, yeah, Cain and his uh, son Enoch, the evil Enoch, uh, they were great builders themselves. So they worked with the fallen angels. And what happened was when the deluge was coming, that's the great flood. This is anti deluding time. That's before the flood. So what happened, they, they built these tombs to preserve. That's where the, um, we did a whole show on it, the Emerald Tablets of Thoth, which is, uh, or Hermes, whatever you call them, which is the evil Enoch. That's who he is. So they built um, these um, ancient tablets and all that stuff to preserve the knowledge in these tombs uh, and under the ground to survive the flood. So later on, they could dig the stuff up and spread that esoteric knowledge throughout the world uh, to rebrand this occultism. It's it's nothing new. That's why it's, the New Age stuff is nothing new about it. It's ancient stuff. So um, that's what they did. And uh, what they did is they take uh, things of God and twist it. So if you one instance here, we could do many. But when God tells you in Genesis, right, to use the stars in the skies for signs and seasons and prophecies, right, not occultic stuff so you got the occult version of that you know what i mean so basically what they fallen angels and all that they talk the cultic twisted backwards version of the seven sacred sciences that's what they did to corrupt mankind and all that to make them think they could exceed without god so god um it's not that he didn't want us to prosper not at all you know he wanted us to prosper but he wanted us to rely on him say hey you know you don't have to worry about things because i'm here you know and uh and when a you know mankind says you know what we could do better than you and so it's always led to death and destruction so um the seven sacred sciences once again uh, is, uh grammar rhetoric logic arithmetic uh geometry music and astronomy so and they, in these seven beings we're going to go through all these cu uh cultures and all that there was more than seven there was uh, 200 at least fallen angels off of mount Hermon. but these seven particular ones went all over the world to different ancient cultures helped them build the cities 
and teach the people this uh, arcane knowledge. You know, and so uh, and it obviously was destruction of Atlantis. We, you know, the flood and all that stuff happened. So, and you, we're going to get to these guys later. And it all goes back to Osiris again. You know, it's crazy stuff. But uh, anyway, uh, the seven sages of ancient Babylon or uh, uh, Atlantis here. So we're going to get into these uh, things here of who they were. And uh, we're going to go through all the ancient cultures and everything else. I got a lot of stuff. Brian's got a lot of stuff. And I don't even know where to begin, to tell you the truth. Uh, just like so much stuff. And, you know, you're excited, too, because you want to get this information out. But at the same time, you want to slow down, too, because I don't want to jam so much stuff that's going to confuse everybody. Because there's a lot of videos out there. And, again, like the occultists and New Age and all that. They love the stuff. But they take, you know... The bad side of the stuff, uh, and all glorify these angels, these fallen angels, the seven sages, you know what I mean? And we don't do that, you know what I mean? We're going to tell you exactly what they are, and we got scripture and everything else to even talk about that. So, anyway, um, if you want to start off, Brian, with uh, some, you know, with Atlantis and all that, and absolutely, Dan. Um, this particular topic alone, uh, it's it's compelling, it, it intrigues me. So, for the sake of this video, and for me and Dan's mindset uh, for it because it's a lot here like dan said new age stuff and all these different things that we're going to be talking about but this is just for research only some of the subjects we're going to be talking about me and brother dan do not believe in it we don't believe but this is the new age understanding in these occultic practices but we are going to take a deep dive into some things that will baffle the mind so hang on to your seat folks this is where it always i always love this is where i love uh, to do i love the clairvoyant stuff the remote viewing so I guess we could just start with this, Dan, is to kind of make it uh, start off like this. So, so me and Dan has done, you know, the astro projection stuff, the star star or excuse me, Project Stargate, the uh, Ascended Masters. You know, Brother Dan was talking about Thoth and the Emerald Tablets. That program we did on the on that. Yeah, it's interesting they they say that Jesus was the ascended master. Okay, so I'll get to uh, why they say that. Well, one thing they say it is, they'll say that Mary was literally a hybrid. Okay, they literally say that Mary was a hybrid of Atlantis. Uh, she's an ancestor of the Atlantis, I mean, a descendant of the Atlanteans. And she supposedly had Jesus and... There you go, and that's how he. This is this is the really occultic stuff here. This is dark, and they say that Jesus was just ascended because he was able to. He was a hybrid, plus he was the son of God with all these different abilities, plus he was a Lantian with telekinesis, telepathic, you know, teleportation, uh, levitation, all this stuff. It's pretty dark stuff, folks. Hmm. I mean, it's pretty dark. I mean, it's pretty dark. The Atlantean, uh, you know, I think this is where it's all like the other day was talking about X Men. Aqu Aquaman, all these characters, the Gilbarim, right? There's all this connection. And I'll tell you a story real quick talking about Atlantis. And in, in the Ohio Valley, there's a particular race of giants that come out of Delaware. So it's up the East Coast, the Allegheny. I think it's called the Allegheny River. As they ascended, coming from the water, they come down to my state of Kentucky and had a bloodbath war. With these other giants well the indians and you can go throughout even the western there's all kinds of uh the western side of america there's all kinds of evidence of this to be true there's these beings that was depicted as tall white skinned taller than the average indian and they would teach the indians certain skills like what brother Dan was talking about the arts and all these different things. Um, and it makes one, it makes one ponder on the idea as like, Hey, is this the star people they talk about? But then I've took it even deeper and looked into that. It's a Lantian. There's like a Lantian connection with these entities, these beings. And what's even real, really bizarre is the giants you know, we're going to be talking about that in Aztecian, um, you know, mythology and all that. But um, there's just stuff that just make your jaw drop when you talk about these certain specific things. So, speaking of Kentucky, I saved this 
for this particular program because me and Dan was wanting to do this one for a couple weeks now. So there's a book that Brother Dan, uh, I mean, Brother David, forgive me. Uh, he let me borrow it, I think, or he let me have it. <laughs> it is called, I don't know if everybody can see it on the screen, but I will try my best to uh, zoom in there and show everybody. It's the Bible and the Bermuda Triangle by George Johnson and Don Tanner. Well, folks, this particular book has a lot of interesting information in it. And it talks about the Atlanteans. And it also talks about my home state. So I'm going to speak about this. I'm going to probably blow your mind a little bit. And then we're going to talk about what's going on in 2023 that kind of correspond with the information that I'm going to be presenting. So hang on to your seat, folks. So there's a gentleman in Kentucky, born, and uh, he was born in 1877. His name is Edgar Pacey. They actually have a historical landmark. I think the family and everything have a landmark for him. That, that and his so-called Christian psychic. <laughs> that is correct. Yeah. Um, he was uh, born in 1877 and passed away in 1945. But here's the interesting part, Brother Dan. He was born on a farm. No, here's where it gets fun. He was born on a farm in Hopkinsville, Kentucky. So when I hear on a farm in Ho Hopkinsville, Kentucky, I, the first thing I think about is Little Green Men. They have a Little Green Men Best Festival in Kentucky. And then also I think about a farm, and I'm thinking Indian mounds. First thing I'm thinking about, Dan, first thing I'm thinking about, you can't make this stuff up, um, but uh, – yeah, it gets pretty wild. So, Brother Dan jumped ahead of me. But, yeah, he's uh, he's uh, supposedly a psychic. He used to be a clairvoyant or before he passed away. I'll read what he I read what he has been documented that he had to us that he said. It's pretty it's pretty baffling. OK, so according to Edgar Casey, he said there's a sunken metropolis under the sea of the Bema Island, 50 miles east of Miami. He believed that life originated on this lost continent of Atlantis. And that we today, now here's where it gets weird, folks, because I'm going to mention something that has been uh, broad broadcast across the airways two days ago. There's a gentleman in the news right now that's building a new platform on Twitter. And I'm not, I'm not condoning, I'm not putting anybody down or, you know, blasting anybody. So I'll bring his name up in a minute, but it does tie together with this uh, this 1970s book that I have in my hand, by the way. So, he believed that the life originated a lost continent of Atlantis. But here's the twist, folks. Here's where it gets really twisted. Like I said before, there's a lot of things that we are going to be mentioning tonight that me and Brother Dan do not believe in at all. Period. Zero. Mm. And it's so occultic and dark in nature. It's Luciferian and satanic. I'm not saying that uh, Edward Casey was you know, of Satan or anything like that. I'm just talking about some of the stuff that's getting ready to be proposed here. Bring to the table here tonight. So the lost kit, the lost con of Atlantis. He said that we today have been reincarnated <laughs> through many entities into our present forms. So I'm going to just hold on to that thought folks, the reincarnation of Atlanteans in the many entities into our present forms. He calls us the, he called us, like called these, our Atlantean reincarnations. So hold on to that thought, folks, because I'm going to tie this all into the Aztec here later. Uh, Casey was born on the farm in near Hopkinsville, Kentucky in March, and he, he was born on March 18th, 1877. He died on January 3rd, 1945. The age of 67, from the age of 25, over a period of 43 years, he left more than 14,000 documented uh stentographic records of telepathic clairvoyant statements he had given to more than 8,000 people. Okay. So 8,000 people. That's a, that's a lot. That's a large gathering. That's a pretty large uh, congregation. If you want to, that, that followed this individual. And like I said, I'm not for the sake of this video and for my mind's sake, I'm not putting down Edgar Casey. Uh, if he had seen these things, if this is all legitimate, he might be in direct communication with fallen angels. Let's just face it. That's what me and brother Dan would say on here. I know he would agree with me. He refers to these uh, typewriting documents as readings. So he's, you know, talking about psychic abilities and telekinesis and telepathic. 
and remote viewing, all that good stuff. You hear more about it here, like, you know, the last, you know, five years, four years to do with military applications, et cetera. But he goes into hypnotic sleep and he's able to see the subjects of light. So just think about that, folks. This is documented. He says they're subjects of light of their past, present, and future entities. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Dan, if you want to chime in any time, let me know. Oh, go just ahead. go ahead. I'll, go I'll ahead. Let you okay. All right. Uh, so he predicted the people's future. So he would look um, on the basis of these past lives and the other forms and places. And Casey also presents that he was able to see and talk to these and have visions. And even at the age of eight, I mean, excuse me, the age of 21 in 1898, he became a salesman, all that good stuff. And um, by the time he developed a gradual, uh, he was paralyzed in his throat muscles, right? So he, uh, he threatened, or excuse me, which was threatening his loss of his voice. So he couldn't do, you know, he couldn't be a car salesman. Which the doctors were unable, unable to find a physical, you know, whatever caused the physical um, infirmity. They tried hypnosis, all kinds of stuff. This is like back in the 1800s, early 1900s, folks. Let's just let's just get with it here. As he restored, as the last time he restored, Casey was uh, asked a friend to help him re-enter into the same hypnotic sleep, and they enabled him to memorize all of his school books, all of his school books as a child. Once he was in the trance, he solved his problem by recommending medications and manipulating therapy, which successfully was able to restore his uh, voice and cure his throat trouble. So just think about this, folks. Following the method, he was able to uh, cure elements of thousands of other people until his death in 1845. So I'm going to stop there for a little bit. So just think about this for a minute. He's literally saying that covered everything from te he covered everything from technology, geographic names, and people that final destruction of Atlantis. He could actually talk and to communicate with these in the individuals. And uh, I'll pause there and let Dan uh, comment. What do you think, Brother Dan, on these certain topics? And, you know, we talked about clairvoyance and psychic abilities and tele telekinesis. Project Stargate is one thing that resonate, resonates in my mind. But this individual, he had a lot of stuff. And I'm not, I'm not, I'm not saying he was a fraud or anything. I'm, I mean, whatever he was putting out there and, and communicating, he was, I, th I think he was actually communicating with something. I mean, I don't think he would make, I don't think this is made up. I think this is yeah, legitimate. Definitely, um, yeah. <laughs> yeah. When you study Ed Casey, he claimed to be, which is uh, oxymoron, uh, Christian psychic, you know, even though the Bible says have nothing to do with divinization and all that, you know, but anyway, he claimed to be one of them. And, uh, he, which I truly believe he did communicate with spirits, which the Bible calls unclean familiar spirits or even fallen angels. Uh, who knows? But I mean, this guy was heavily into the occult. I mean, obviously, and and for him to come up with these uh, stories, which is uh, you know, these spirits tell you this stuff, yes, but half the stuff is a lie, just to mislead people. You know, especially New Age spirits and all that stuff. Uh, you know, and this is uh, he was big into the New Age uh, education. Yeah, so this is him here. You know, March eighteenth, eighteen eighty seven, born and died January third, nineteen forty five. Was an American attributed clairvoyant who claimed to speak from a higher self. Why always in the trance like state? So yeah, that's um, new age garbage. You know what I mean? So, and like Brian said, he was um, talk about afterlives, past lives, and everything else. And so he was communicating with. He was known as a sleeping prophet, by the way. Sounds like another Joseph Smith. Uh, but anyway, um, that's this what guy, I'm saying. The whole the whole farm connection with him born on a farm in Hopkinsville. Yep. And Hopkinsville is a hot a hot zone for paranormal and. All kinds of Indian male activity, the whole the whole thing, Dan, in and Hopkinsville. His, uh, association mm -hmm. he found in research and enlightenment. You know, I mean, that's his uh, centuries uh, started there. So yeah, it's pure New Age anyway. But yeah, obviously he was communicating with some fallen angels or some kind of uh, you know principalities, whatever the case, or even unclean familiar spirits. You know, I mean, the lying deceiving spirits, as the Bible uh, talks about them. So anyway. Um, Having communications with this stuff, they would tell you, yeah, they tell you a lot of stuff that happened in the past. I'll tell you a lot of truth and all that, but it's convoluted with a lot of garbage as well. To miss because they'll they'll give you something accurate to hook you in, then they'll start leading you astray and giving you false information after that. You know what I mean? So you know that's what he he did generally, but uh, you know, so yeah, I'm, I agree with you. Uh, he definitely. Uh, had some kind of uh, clairvoyance or uh, you know communications with these evil spirits. Yeah, I mean, and then also, 
just to go back and have like total recall with his, you know, going back to his school books when he was a boy and real young child and all these different things, he was going through some type of, let's just face it, astral projection of some shape or form. Yep. I mean, he was spectating, you know, and it, it didn't help none that he was able to communicate with these beings. And also, um, like I was mentioned earlier with the Atlantean, you know, as far as I was mentioning like Aztec and all these different things, mm -hmm. the speaking about this, the reason why I bring this up is bring it beginning the program here is because we're going to talk about something that is very hot topic here lately. I know it's had nothing. Well, it still has to do with Atlantis. Um, just the other day, Tucker, Tucker Carlson, I know everybody knows who Tucker is, is speaking about the UFO phenomenon. Well, it's interesting. This book, the Bible and the Bermuda triangle by George Johnson that I'm reading from. And you speaking of, uh, Edward, uh, Edgar Casey here. Um, also, the same chapter, same information, literally the same front of the book. It talks about UFO phenomenon. So this is, mm -hmm. and it's tied directly to Atlantean, okay, and Lemira, like Atlantis technology. And we're going to talk about the seven root races and everything because it goes along with the seven sages of, of Atlantis. And Tucker Carlson, um, there was like a three or four minute video during a redacted uh, program. It was on YouTube the other day, two days ago, I think. He even bring he he couldn't speak about everything that he was going to be speaking about. He couldn't speak, you know, to the public eye view of it, but he said he, he was so scared about it. He wouldn't even tell his wife certain information. He said that is a spiritual application. He literally come out and said that Dan, that there was a spiritual application in which me and you, Hey, look, this, this program's called spiritual warfare Friday. And we're talking about the spiritual warfare of things, you know, to combat these things and, and to be, you know, fully armored and have understanding and say, Hey, look, this stuff is, this stuff is hidden, but it's actually in plain sight now. And uh, Tucker Carlson, I'm not throwing him under the bus or anything. He just was saying in general, like, there's just so many, it's very scary. The public could not be able to handle, mm. you know, what would be presented if it was able to all come out. And then there's like a government agencies and everything. There's a lot of government. Oh, we officials. said that for years, you know, like, mm -hmm. that's why we said they give out information incrementally. But uh, yeah, he's, he's right on that. If they would just slam everything out, it would cause a state of panic. <laughs> Absolutely. And see, that's what I'm saying. Like, if you have this gentleman, let's just say for fun here, if you had this gentleman here in Hopkinsville, Kentucky, mind you, in 1877, let's just say the eight, late 1800s, and he's able to do this stuff. This is literally, we're talking about right after Tartaria and mm. all these different, you know, mud floods and all these different different things that have already happened in history. And we're not even in the 1900s yet. And this, this gentleman is talking that the reincarnation of Atlanteans, there's this technological advancements and all these different things. It goes on. It gets crazy, Dan. I mean, he even talks about destructive periods of lost continents, and he talks about the uh, these divine beings invade the bodies of the pre... It says this. This is what it says verbatim here. It says, divine beings invaded and invaded the, invaded the bodies of the pre creatures and animals for their own self agronization. Uh, he calls the divine beings who uh, possess the bodies of earthly creatures. It literally says this, the sons of Bela and those who have stained the sons of law one. This is something to do with Atlantis, okay? It's nothing to do with biblical narrative. But my point is, for the sake of this video, there's Atlantis traits and pies. There's something to do with, because um, it gets really bad. It, like the more we go on and read here, it talks about soul traveling. And there's this individual that he was able to talk up to that would that was big into ancient science and was talking about soul traveling and to move original like a lost continent of ancient ancient atlantis and there's all kinds of stuff and it's it goes on and says the heck it, it just goes on talks about california and all these different sites around the world which i was saying at the beginning of this video or this broadcast when, when i was talking about the atlantean obviously there's a ton of atlantis um megalithic structures everything and people just don't pick it up in modern, you know, modern time, people don't even second get, they don't even second have a second thought about it. Oh yeah. What do you mean? Lantis was a, a Disney movie, right? Or just like some kind of folklore. They don't even think or question it. And I think a hundred percent that this gentleman uh, was directly in connection with, because he talks about light beings, tall light beings, you know what I mean? So there you go. So we have, there we go. We have the tall, you know, we have the tall gigantic, you know, it doesn't say that, but there's tall beings that's taller than him, mm. taller than, you know, the Indian cultures talking about it. Hello. So what do we got here? And they, they, even, I've got some old books that was written in the 1700s. Said the Indians would talk about these, 
white beings, these tall white people with beautiful hair that would come and teach them the sciences, the the religion, the the arts, just like you mentioned earlier before, just at the beginning of the broadcast, Dan. And I think it's tied directly to the seven root races and the seven sages of Atlantis. I'll give the floor back to you, Dan. Yeah, so um, I'm going to read out of this book here, a couple of paragraphs here from the Genesis 6 Conspiracy by Gary Wayne. So basically talking about Atlantis and all that stuff and when, you know, what exactly what I'll talk about. So uh, just bear with me here. So anyway, so in, uh, he goes on to talk about Egyptian mythology holds that the surviving post-Diluvian companions of Horus salvaged and transported with them from the first time great knowledge from across the sea to Egypt, India, and China. This mysterious order of sages survived the great flood and arrived, because remember the Bible says there's Nephilim before and after the flood. So he's saying that um, the order of sages survived the great flood and arrived from a distant island and continent and were per, uh, precisely as uh, builder gods, senior ones, and the followers of Horus. And according to uh, Professor Raymond of Manchester University, the mortal uh, builder gods acknowledge also the lords of flight, you know, Brian just mentioned them, the lords of light, right? Immigrated uh, from island, Atlantis, and celebrated as the homeland of uh, primeval, one yeah, I'm sorry, yeah, I'm trying to read from the book, yeah, primeval uh, ones whose home was threatened with destruction, the seven post-Diluvian sages were credited with uh, rebuilding the post-Diluvian world and recreating a new age of God, the gods there. And the seven sages are also attributed with the designing of the buildings of the Egyptian, I'm sorry, Egyptian monuments. Uh, this according to the building of texts, uh, and li likely the same cryptic group of uh, Osiris being, you know, they belong to Osiris, I guess. Uh, so anyway, the original divine and immortal Shabudi, uh, according to the Raal, were indeed uh, great gods. Uh, they're builder gods, uh, senior ones, and an order of priests they created were renewed as a brethren of the seven sages and likely led originally by Enoch, you know, even Enoch he's talking about. The brethren uh, were generally identified as the offspring of kin of seven angelic sages. Remember, ROHL notes that ancient Egyptians uh, knew the uh, the original uh, it's called Shabitu uh, S H E B T I A U it's heavenly and not Anunnaki so they believe they come from you know all the and you'll see the same thing and when you we show you from the ancient cultures themselves they believe that these things came from uh, you know space or whatever the case uh, you know another planet which we know you know they're interdimensional but anyway and uh, this other uh, chapter points out too this is a page one fifty five. One also wonders after the Atlantis uh, connections, particularly when, with recalls of the ancient Babylonian king, list that cited the ten Atlantean-like kings known as the Poseidon kings, you know, the uh, king Poseidon, is also curious to consider that Aneki, like uh, Poseidon, was god of the waters. Well, Enil, like Zeus, was uh, god of the air and sky, and in both um, pantheons of gods, shared in governing of the earth. And on top of this, the anthropologist uh, Jermaine Derlin uh, notes that ancient Babylonians believed that Babylon was indeed founded by mythological fish gods, Mesopotamian, which is uh, another one would be Dagon too, the Bible mentions that. Mesopotamian mythology holds that life was brought to our world by cra uh, craters from the sky known as the Onans, which is the Anunnaki. The watches, whatever you want to call them, and uh, which coincidentally is Mayan for he who lives in the water. So, which is, uh, you know, when you rope it all together, you would have to read the whole chapter to really grasp this, but I just wanted to point that out. Uh, when you rope it all together, uh, all these ancient cultures had this one main god. It was like a fish god or something, you know what I mean? And or, or, or so you're always associated with a fish or a serpent spirit, something like that. So, um, mm -hmm. again, you would have to really dive into this chapter because there's so much information in there. I just wanted to uh, highlight a couple of the texts that he talks about in the uh, chapter there. So, um, and the chapter is actually called The Seven Sages of Atlantis, too. <laughs> That's what we named the show after, but uh, awesome book. And But, you know, basically Gary gets to the end, you know, he puts mythology. I, I mean, I hate using that word mythology. I really do because 
Yeah, even though they call it mythology, it's not mythology. It's real. It's history. It should be mm-hmm. history. This stuff was real. You know what I'm saying? And uh, so this is exactly what um, we're trying to highlight here because these things are coming back, guys. And we're going to see all kinds of things. We've got the four uh, fallen angels in the Euphrates River that are about to be released. You know, that it's drying up and everything else. So, and then Jesus says, as the days of Noah, so shall be before he returns. And he said, the thing in Matthew, uh, the things that are come up out of the earth, men's hearts are going to fail them for this. You know, so we're just trying to show you what, the, you know, because you need to know the past to know the future. Mm-hmm. So um, we Gary's point out, too, that these, um, all these seven sages, and he, he names them, so the fallen angels, it's Azazel, Amasis, uh, Gadriel, Barakio, uh, Kokreo, Timiel, and Astrio. So, I um, mean, and and by the way, guys, we're going to butcher a lot of names tonight, but you know what? These fallen angels and all that, they butchered mankind. They butchered history. So, guess what? I could care less about butchering their names. So, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, absolutely, Diane. Uh, real quick, too, just to, before we get too far here, the Edgar uh, Casey, he also, uh, based off the records that is found on his, um, his bio, um, mm-hmm. The uh, what is it called? Let me get it in my notes here. Yeah, the Akashic Records. The Akashic Records. So this is where things get kind of weird. So um, try to keep everything that me and Dan are just pray about it. Don't let this seed. Uh, don't let. Uh, we're just speaking about it. We're warning you all. Warning everybody about this certain topic. You'll hear uh, when me and brother Dan did the Thoth and the Emerald Tablets. These Akashic records, right? The Akashic rec- mm-hmm. records are like the um, the compendium of thoughts, words, motions, intent, the past, the future, the present. And as far as the account of Edgar Casey, he would talk to these terms and all these entities and life forms, not just human. Okay, let's just, I know. And I know we mentioned UFO when I was talking about Tucker, Tucker Carl- Carlson, but me and... Me and Brother Dan would, you know, we obviously understand that's, uh, you know, what we talk about is fallen angel technology and these entities that are trying to manipulate us to do their bidding. And I think this is what's happened throughout time and just nobody believes it anymore. It just seems like it's like, like we were saying at the beginning of the program that everybody just believes it is just fairy tale. Um, these, they're encoded into a non-physical plane and its existence known as the mental plane. And we'll talk about these certain terms here later and talk about vibrational rate and the fabric of space and all these different things and mechanics they're bidding. But these Akash records are totally mentioned in the, um, I know Billy Carson that I referenced that book of the Emerald Tablets of Thoth, that book that if you go back and watch that program on Spiritual Warfare Friday, he talks about the Akashic records. And if you look that up, Akasha in the Sanskrit word means ether, sky or atmosphere. Isn't that crazy, right? So isn't that kind of interesting that the Internet of Things, they're always manipulating and using towers, right? Five, you know, we're talking about towers. I would say, you know, number five, but then cell phone towers. Let's just say that. I'm trying to watch what I say. And they're harnessing the airwaves. And isn't it kind of interesting, these uh, this Akasha the Sanskrit word for ether, sky, or atmosphere. What do you think about that, Brother Dan? I mean, this this can get really – this is going to be a fun program tonight, but and it's real laid back. With, that, with this type of um, technology, these Akashic records, those hologram – I mean, it's it gets into this mechanism of what we would call, let's say, you know, the VR headsets and all these different technological so-called advancements, and that's what these – these Akashic records and accessing these heavenly, the heavenly realm, you know, the third heaven, you know, the second heaven, they're, they're talking about accessing the ether. What do you think about that, Dan? And that's what, I think that's what this clairvoyance and all these other characters, I hate to use characters, but these other people are doing, Mm -hmm. they're accessing fight. They're accessing data. That's of a evil, you know, there's people that there's entities that are roaming around, giving them knowledge. 
And that's where we, me and Dan would totally agree that the fallen angels are well deep inundated into this. What do you think, Dan? Well, it sounds like the uh, Axis and uh, Stoshan spirits, the ether, you know, elemental spirits and everything. Yeah, absolutely. Stoshan, yeah, awesome. absolutely. Absolutely, Dan. 100%. And um, as it, it gets even worse, <laughs> you know, speaking about the uh, Atlantean continent and the lost city of Lemira, so in the Pacific. Uh, claimed to be a civilization lived on the continent until its destruction. Mm. So here's where it gets really weird. So speaking of the account from um, Edgar Casey, these Lemurians lived in an advanced culture with large buildings, temples, transportation by boats, and they supposedly had large heads, okay, with third eye in the middle of their forehead like a tumorous growth. Lemurians used the uh, appendage, for cosmic ability to communicate physically a form of mental telepathic. So this civilization uh, was a, a beginning of beings which still exist today, according to this 1970 book. In fact, many people, uh, this is what it says, folks. So if you're in this area, you know, don't, don't hold me to this. It's just what the book says. The people of California come from this prehistoric culture. So if you look at that, there's always this prehistoric man, prehistoric culture. And then literally, uh, as I just read a few sentences above, it says large heads with a third eye in the middle of it. It looks like a tumorous growth. And like I said earlier, we're talking about giants. When you talk about the Atlanteans, the, and don't let nobody fool you on this UFO phenomenon. I mean, it doesn't take anybody that long to do a little read. Well, it might, but, you know, a couple hours and take, you know, just a little basic understanding that there was flying crafts, you know, the Vinama, the Nazis knew about it. They was trying to tap into that Atlantean technology. They was absolutely the Vinama, these, uh, the Orfana, the Aoife, these large ships. Uh, they call them, they used to call them the triple, um, triple city, the Tripura. That was an Atlantean. They used to call this country that we live on, uh, Atalan. That's what it used to be called in the Atlantean culture. And the the triple city could actually hover and transport people from place to place. And why do you think when you come across uh, anything on YouTube or whatever and somebody's discussing that there's a large, oh, there's a large mass over the country. There's this large, you know, something's popping up over the skies and there's the intergalactical mm -hmm. federation above our skies. Well, back in the Atlantean days, it was like, oh, yeah, that's just our, that's our capital or that's our so-called whatever they call the tripula the tripula triple city and isn't that just baffling like the lemuras have these cosmic ability dan and we're talking about when you like look at astral projection stuff that me and you have talked about on many programs that we've done together uh physically telepathically this you know these people would thrive off this type of communication isn't it interesting that that stuff's coming I mean, that mm -hmm. stuff, they're trying to tap into that. They're trying to give us abilities to uh, do things with VR, you know, to, you know, to, let's just face it. I mean, you go to a different land, you get to, you know, different landscape, you get a, you know, go on vacation and look at Google Earth imagery and actually look like you're there in a VR yeah. headset. And you're pretty much, let's just face it. You're projecting, you're project. That's the same. It's the, it's a little, I think it's a dumbed down version from what I'm talking about here. These people was actually doing it. You know, like something like off Star Trek, like beam me up, Scotty. I hate to use mm. that term, but they was dematerializing and manifesting somewhere else back in the day. Let's just, I mean, let's just go weird here on Spiritual Warfare Friday. But like you said, they put it in the movies, right? Yeah. So there you go, Dan. I mean, you know, what's your, what do you, what's your take on that? Mm -hmm. No, you're right. And, uh, it's, and you know, the technology, you know, because you mentioned technology too, you know, the Atlantean technology, ancient technology, whatever. And that's where we get a lot of stuff today. So I wanted to point this out too. Um, you know, you know, we don't mean to go back and forth, but uh, the seven sages, like there's, what we point out earlier, it's not just limited to Atlantis. You have the uh, Sapashuri or the seven sages, and I, again, we're gonna butcher these names. Each culture had a different name for them, but they're all called the seven sages of in ancient India. You got Greece, seven sages of ancient Greece. The Apocalypse, the seven sages of ancient Mesopotamian tradition. Seven Sages of the, Bam of the Bamboo Grove, uh, the Scholars of Nature in China. Seven Wise Masters of Rome. And, uh, you know, the medieval stories on India and Persia. Seven Sages, the uh, antagonist group of the Pokemon. That's why you're not Pokemon, you're not Pokemon, you card game and all that. Oh, so you said Pokemon, is that what you're saying, Brother Dan? 
Yeah, Pokemon and, and all these. And then um, that Zelda series. Is it the yep. Zelda series in the next one? No joke, right? Well, yeah, yep. The Zelda wow. series. Wow. Wow. So if you notice all these things, guys, like uh, all these uh, these kind of games and everything, right? Comic books. Even uh, that, what's that art? You know, that uh, cartoon. It's not cartoon. It's an anime. The, like um, the, the Kung Fu ones and all that anime. They have the Seven Sages in there as well. You're talking about the Dragon Ball Z movie. Dragon, uh, Dragon Boy, Ball Z. Z. Yeah. <laughs> they have the seven. They have the seven Dragon Balls. Yep. That's correct. And it goes back. You can go in to Karnak and all these different hieroglyphics. They have the seven rays of God that they call it. Like yep. these orbs come down, right? These are like these bells, and there's all kinds of different depictions on hieroglyphics, and that it all ties in. I mean, yep. it it's just baffling. I'm sorry to interrupt you. I just no, I was like, right. just say Pokemon, and you said Pokemon, and you <laughs> Zelda, said Zelda. Yeah. Stuff. I was like, wow. I remember playing that, the Arcania time. You got to find, uh, you got to get the seven rocks or something like that. You got to go to each and world and get a rock, whatever, to defeat the bad guy, whatever, or some kind of stone in, or it's something. In a, it's in a Nintendo game in yeah. a Zelda series. Wow. In Pokemon Black and White. Black and White. There's the yin yep. and the yang. You can't make it up. Yeah. Yeah. So wow. you get all these like mythological type uh, movies and cartoons and games that show seven sages or seven masters whatever you want to call them but they're associated all through history you know uh here's one it was uh this uh, article i discovered here it's called ancient inquiry so basically uh, the mystery of the seven sages where they visit us from other the stars so they go through all the ancient cultures and they even point out here that all the ancient cultures many ancient cult legends tell us that the uh, bygone ages a group of seven sages of extraordinary wisdom and untold powers visited the earth from the stars, and they traveled around the world and passed the knowledge of the of all the sciences and arts to the people. This is like right out of the Bible, right? Yeah. And this is a science uh, history uh, publication. It's uh, I think it's uh, from Middle East or something like that, or in India, whatever. But yeah, uh, they. They went all over the world and passed the knowledge and taught the sciences and arts to the people. And they advised the kings of their loyal duties, instituted a proper code of living, established correct modes of ritual and ordained, sustained cosmic harmony, and ensured happiness and prosperity of the people. And it was said to be a time when our planet was closely integrated with the largely cosmic family, a very different era compared to the profane world we live in today. And the most uh, extensive accounts of the seven sages have been preserved in the Mesopotamian and Indian traditions, through we find traces of similar information almost everywhere. So even that point out, it, it, it's the same information everywhere. And they go through the Mesopotamian and everything else, and uh, crazy stuff, man. And there's like this, pictures. This also the- this also has. If I'm not mistaken, isn't this to do with like Inky and Enlil and all yep. these characters from the, you know, Samaritan and the uh, Anunnaki that you referenced earlier? They're, it's it's weird. It's weird, Dan, because you got to have like serpent snakes, all these different yep. characters. The, the Nagas, uh, the Nagas are all, it's symbolism. And it's interesting. If I'm not mistaken, uh, I know you have the, the article up. Does it have seven heads on the snake? Is it seven, Dan? Uh, yep, not the, uh, the one with the, the Nagas. The Naga Nagas. with seven hooded serpent. And there you go. So there, there's the seven hooded. There's the seven. There's the seven reference. Yep. There you go. And a seven hooded <laughs> serpent um, garden, the causeway at the Angkor Wat Temple in Cambodia. And this one over here on the left is from India. And this here is Isis with a serpent tail, second century Egyptian terracotta. <clears throat> and uh, Isis and Serpents, Osiris and Serpents, Greco Roman period. So you got to see these people all over the world, the same people. And it's always associated with either um, um, a lot of times as a fish god or a fish serpent. But it's always a serpent, and you know where the serpent comes from. That's mm. like if you study ancient Kundalini magic, it's a serpent spirit. So all over the world, you're seeing these serpent-like spirits, and like the one in um, the Quasicori, uh from the ancient Maya, Mayan Aztecs, whatever. I'm sorry, there, yeah, Quasicori is a serpent, like dragon-type serpent uh, creature, and it's all amphibious too. So you see the same people all over the world. It's uh, it's amazing. And they teach them the same things. Yeah, the um, me and brother David, we did that uh, program on Chichen. It's a uh... You know, they have quasi-qualto, and you have the 
snake reference. You have the, um, what is it? The, uh, not the snake. Re- well, there's a snake reference and there's something else that just, it just, um, slipped my mind, but the quasi quarto, there's that giant symbolism. There's the Jaguar, the lion, there's all kinds of different animal correlation that all these cultures, right. Um, correlate together it's it, it's something that you can't really you just really can't it's there's nothing you can say that it's just why is it repetitive mm. and like began the program you know how can somebody just say that this doesn't exist how can people say that this is just not oh it's just all make-believe and these guys are just quacks the, there's inundated evidence thousands of thousands of years and sometimes more than that that has been the same seven you got set the, the depictions are baffling as far as the archaeology standpoint and the you know the 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 carvings the granite the hieroglyphics the pant there's nothing else to say i mean it's just like wow how's this stuff the correlation with the seven the comparisons are are daunting dan there's nothing else to say it's 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 baffling man it's baffling oh it is yeah the the quasi um, indonesia southern india you know, it's like when you put these together, like they show you the correlation of the ancient cultures, you know, a few of them at least, yeah. The same bucket in different parts of the world, same uh, descriptions. Um, this one over here, Syria, this is over um, in Iraq. You know, it's just like, it's crazy. And like um, the same type of beings that taught mankind certain things, they're great builders and all that. And now granted, a lot of these seven sages and all that, because they, um, Gary, even Gary Wayne gets into the mention, like uh, when a, the fallen angels went away, there was other classes of you know people that took over as because it comes from the uh, if you notice everything's with a serpent most of them because it comes from the brotherhood of the serpent, mm-hmm. which was the one of the first uh, very secret societies established back in the day, and that's why Sir, uh, Satan represented as a ser- uh, serpent in the Book of Genesis, and uh, it's crazy, man. And these um, divine beings, uh, it's always represented with a serpent or something. It's a cult that spawned the brotherhood, or yeah, I'm sorry, the brotherhood order of the snake that continues to this day. So um, it was called the brotherhood of the snake. You know, they, they, the fallen angels started this thing, and it just continued through the years. And you now it's like either you know before it's like um, Nephilim that took over, or some kind of people they put in charge to take over the secret society that went on for thousands and thousands of years, even to this very day. Now, why do you think the Vatican, uh, independent was it Independence Audience Hall? I'm sorry, Audience Hall in the Vatican is looks like what a snake. Mm-hmm. You know, I can show you that too. But I mean, um, it, it's not a coincidence. Yeah, the um, what what really baffles my mind. I mean, we're talking about the main. This is the mainstream, like, you can access these files at the click of a button. And look, look who's coming out of um, Look who's coming out of the little, the ocean, whatever. Mm -hmm. And look, a giant snakehead, the audience Mm hall at the Vatican. You can't make this stuff up. That's a giant giant serpent head right there. Yeah, it's ridiculous. Yeah, it's... um, What's even worse about it, Dan, this is main, you can look at, you can access this stuff right now. Like anybody in the audience here, anybody in the chat can access this. So what's even worse is when you start going like on like just local areas and small little archaeology digs and stuff, and you start finding little small increments of just small little elements of things. Mm -hmm. What's bizarre, Dan, is like some of the research that I've looked into around my area, when you have... Indian mounds that have tablets is speaking of Joseph Smith earlier. Um, when you have tablets that have literally been translated here just recently in the last four or five years, and there's a snake on them. It's like looking at them, like the man's face or the depiction of a man. And there's a snake coming at the man. They're almost like the, uh, not jam, is it the jam breeze or the, uh, Gemini, the Jambres, I think, and it has like they're facing off with each other. But one of them, the depiction says the man says, "Oh no," and I can't. I was trying to remember if I read some of the translations on. It's hard to to interpret, but he's like, "Oh no," and then like the snake is like devouring him, and the tablet has something to do with resurrection, 
and reincarnation and gates and star. It, it literally gets into some deep rabbit hole stuff. And that's local around my area, Dan. Well, and we're talking about the mainstream stuff here. Quasi Qualto, Kukalkin was what I was going to refer to earlier with the Chichen. It's a uh, the snake, the you know, representation of the shadow. A uh, certain time of the year, the snake, whoever built Chichen Itza, and it's uh, you know basically quasi qualto worship, blood sacrifice. There's Dan. The sun goes up from the quasi from the snake head all the way up to the top of the temple of the of the tip of the pyramid. It makes a slithering snake of a shadow. It whoever built it, man, like they had an aerial footage. They had to have been able to see from above to be able to correspond the sun's trajectory to be able to place it strategically there and have the serpent in that, you know, a certain type of the equinox or the summer solstice, or I can't remember the time, but anyways, the, the shade from the rocks make a slithering snake and it's the Kukakin, the quasi quato, the worshiping of that. It's bizarre, Dan. I mean, it's baffling the blood sacrifices, the ceremonies, which we're going to be talking about here after, you know, after a little bit later, but it all draws a connection the origins come from somewhere. Is is it all one big, you know, one big mystery piece and one big huge puzzle? Absolutely. The puzzle pieces are spread out all broad all over the all over the earth. But the thing is, when me and Brother Dan are like putting the pieces together, seven heads of the snake, seven, you know, we're talking about Dragon Ball Z, all these different things. There's the, you know, the hieroglyphics that Kar Karnak and different things. It has the seven rays we've talked about this on um you know the dan Badoni show you know the you know remember, uh, michael flynn talking about the seven ray the seven angels mm -hmm. remember him doing that yep. that uh, that insane prayer what's that dan that's the seven sages right that's the seven you're you're, you're getting in the call uh, called into these occultic things unknowingly in some cases i mean heck me and brother dan just right during the program we're talking about pokemon and the seven sages <laughs> of uh, zelda series i mean come on it's just baffling but uh i'll give the floor back to you dan this stuff is in our face, and even on a small archaeology standpoint in local areas, people are not able to understand because they don't think in geo they don't think geographically like that you have Kukalkin, Quasi Qualto, Ch Chichen Itza, or uh, Aztecian uh, data in Kentucky or anywhere in the East Coast or Ohio Valley, or whatever, because the Atlantean connection is supposedly a story. Just it's all just make believe. Mm -hmm. So, but but when you find Aztecian technology, and set in the backyard of Kentucky, literally, and you can't, you're, you're like, okay, there was ancient. The Atlanteans had six fingers. The Atlanteans was taller. Oh man, what's that mean? The Bible talks about the six fingers, the six toes, the mm -hmm. the giants of old, the mighty men of renown, the Gilberim. What's that mean? And then people are like, well, the time frames don't match up. What's that mean? And see, we're going to be talking about the seven sages here, the seven roots, the seven root races. Yes, there's thousands of years. There's there's hundreds of years, thousands of years apart between them. But there's no way to deny the archaeology standpoint with all mm -hmm. the imagery. Whoever took the time to carve these out in the walls, there's no, there's, it's just undeniable that this, these things cannot all line up like a big pit puzzle piece. And, and you can follow the rabbit. I mean, literally follow the rabbit down the uh, down the yellow brick road. I mean, literally. And they all and, say they um, come from the stars. Like all these cultures, like they believe that they came from the stars. Uh, Native Americans, uh, history, uh, ancient ones used to call them the star people. So it's not a coincidence. And again, when you got uh, hieroglyphics in the cave in Egypt and thousands of miles away, you got hieroglyphics of the same stuff thousands of miles away in another ancient culture, then, you know, all over the world, you got, you know, in the even remote parts of the world where you got uh, hieroglyphics and pictorial things of the same exact things with the same descriptions, you can't make that up. 100%. And shame on academia. They try to downplay it. It's, it makes me sick to my stomach. And they oh, try good. to act like they're more sophisticated. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I can't even talk today. They're more sophisticated than anybody else. They're more educated because we're an established college and all that stuff. So, oh, oh that's just folklore. It's just all, um, you know, mythology and all that. No, it's not. This is real stuff. This is real history. And these are real beings that were on this planet. And they're kind of going back, too. Like you have to emphasize that. But another, um, this is Olivius.org. And these are foreign historical like about history and all that, uh, a lot of these foreign historical publications talk about this stuff. Uh, they call, I can't pronounce this, Apakulu, 
I mean seven sages, the mythological seven wise men who were the teachers of humankind in ancient Mesopotamian myth. And they, they always got to put that in there. Myth and mythological because they try to say, we'll talk about it, but don't worry, it's just a myth. Yeah, whatever. Anyway, it was believed that the gods created humankind to cultivate the soil and make sure that the gods, by means of sacrifice, would receive their meals. However, the first people did not really understand how to perform the task they were supposed to perform. And therefore, the gods of the epically, the seven sages, as teachers, these uh, creatures came to human world from the sea. You know, and then um, he talks about the fish, serpent, god things. Like uh, and it just goes on. And there's that know, there's that river. There's the body of water where there's creatures coming out of again. Yep. It's the same thing that I found in the East Coast up in Delaware. Yep. But this is a totally different area. Come on now. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Sorry yeah, to interrupt. I had to I had to say something because it just goes a lot right along with what I was saying earlier. Mm -hmm. And they even um, recite the Epic of Gilgamesh. Yeah, it's crazy. So you see all these correlations linked to the same things. And uh, Kavivig, I hope I pronounced that right. Kavivig, uh, the list of the seven apocalypse, uh, apocalypse, so basically seven sages. They are known as the apocalypse, two cuneiforms and one baroso. The first known cuneiform is seven of these white, um, you know, seven sages, I should put was published in 1961, and uh, this guy who uh, published, published a book on these things, yeah. Yeah, and and speaking uh, of, of go ahead. these ancient writings and all that stuff, and uh, so basically this guy published a book on all these ancient uh, finds they, that he, they found. And, you know, again, I'm just going, I'm not, you know, going to read all these things, guys, but these are from all over the world, right? And you got to see the similarities to every one of them. Every one of them, like the seven the sages of ancient Egypt. Yeah, I mean, they go through a bunch of them, yeah. The sages of ancient Egypt. And now, mind you, like there's generally like they, they, there's the key seven, but there's more. There's a lot more. You know, what I mean, there was hundreds of fallen angels, but there is a select few that they were like in, completely in charge of certain things, and they're the ones who went all over the world after the flood because when humanity started reestablishing again. These seven angels, these key seven angels, fallen angels, I'm sorry, they went all over the world to every culture, and we could get into the Mayan stuff too if you want and all that. They helped establish, they were called the great builders. And, you know, they, they helped build pyramids and all this other stuff too. They established these uh, civilizations for mankind and taught them how to, and uh, we'll get to later on what the Book of Enoch says in detail of what angel did what. You know what I mean? It's crazy stuff, man. And, all, and it goes to the book of um, Genesis too, uh, chapter 6, when it talks about the fallen angels. They had mixture with the human beings. They, they had children with the fallen, uh, I'm sorry, the, the, the woman of the earth. And they had children called the Nephilim because they were like um, half uh, angel, you know, the, the DNA, whatever the case. And uh, they called them demigods, but they were not gods. Anyway, but um, yeah, there's so much stuff involved. That's so I'm like, I'm, I'm, I'm all over the place. I'm trying to... Uh, String it together so, to make it understandable because I know a lot of people like was well, like what the heck are they even talking about? Because there's so much stuff, there's so many connections. But when you actually view the whole thing from a bird's eye point of view, you could see it clearly. You know what I mean? Because the world they like to make things confused and purposely because most people look at it be like yeah, all right, I don't want nothing to do with it because they yeah. purposely make it complicated. But when you actually study all the stuff, it, it doesn't become complicated anymore because you see the puzzle for what it is. Instead of getting a couple of pieces and having a clue what you're even seeing, you know? 100%. That makes man. sense. Oh, it makes sense. Absolutely. Uh, I want to, I hate to keep going back and forth, but um, you mentioned the Vatican earlier with the snake head and yeah. the the uh, lovely, I guess you want to call it his throne or his uh, chair of, uh, I guess, authority. I guess that's what he calls it. I'm being sarcastic. But have you, did you know, because we're going to be doing on Sunday a program. We're doing our cities lost in time, me and brother David on Karnak. Um, did you know that in the same, cause me and you've done the Nimrod, uh, spiritual warfare Friday. And we looked all over the Vatican and we looked at Google earth imagery and looked at that whole thing. But did you know that the Lateran obelisk 
that's not too far from that snake facility. It's called the Lateran Obelisk. Did you know that's sitting out there in a courtyard? Not the one that's got the keyhole that we referenced in the Nimrod program. Yeah. But it's got Egyptian hieroglyphics carved into it, Brother Dan. Egyptian hieroglyphics. Yeah, they dug and, those and um, So Really? You know, it's just like, wow. <laughs> yeah, those obelisks they got in the Vatican, they literally dug them up from uh, the ancient city on from mm -hmm. Egypt. And they literally dragged them, like the horse horse carriage or whatever, dragged them into Rome and put them up. You know, so what, why would you, you know, if this, uh, which, which we know the Vatican is not a place of God at all. If anything, it's a place of hell. But <laughs> if this is such a holy place, why would you put all these pantheon of gods all over the place? Have you ever seen the Vatican, the statues they got over there? It's a pantheon <laughs> of gods. You know, you know mm -hmm. low case G gods. And mm -hmm. they got this giant obelisk in the middle, the obelisk everywhere else. It's all occultic stuff. Nothing to do with God at all. This is all ancient Babylonian stuff. That's what it is. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's bizarre. Yeah. I always say it all the time on my channel. It's bizarre world. Yeah, bizarre, bizarre world. Bizarre world. Yeah, it doesn't make any sense. And I know we're doing, we've done many shows on the Vatican, but. It goes right along with this program, yeah. and I know I know the all the archives and their whole library that the Vatican's sitting on. All those miles and miles and miles. It was eighty miles worth of uh, scrolls and knowledge, supposedly. I think two hundred. I think I think they was a speculation they had like two hundred fifty miles at one time. There was a great fire in the tunnel system and burned half the library down. There's like eighty something like the eighty miles worth of. Seriously, folks, 80 miles worth of library left, and that's in the Vatican. So where do you think they got that stuff from, mm. right? I bet you they took from all these different, you know, so-called, let's just say, cataclysms, you know, the seven sages of Atlantis, all these different times and time frames of, you know, on this earth, and extracting these from these ancient places and extracting and put them underneath there like a, like a little treasure, like a little hen, you know, protecting their stolen egg that they stole from the all the other ancient places that's the way i see it and they're sitting on a powder keg of knowledge and they're covering it up that's just my opinion but i don't know it's crazy yeah, some more yeah and um ancient origins they talk about this um and we we're talking about maya it says science only acknowledges now what the ancient sages knew about reality five thousand years ago <laughs> which is true you know he'd everything we got today even these um you know nice fancy phones here with the touch screen and all that yeah this is this technology is old to them. They are the ones who gave it to us. It wasn't a guy who decided one day, oh, let me uh, design a screen that we could touch and interact, interface with the computer chip. Or no, this, all this stuff here is ancient technology. That's what it is. Ancient uh, fallen angel technology. Nothing new under the sun. That's the Bible says. And, you know, did they have phones like this back then? I'm not saying they did, but the technology itself existed long ago, thousands of years ago. And they, they even said, yeah, in Maya, science, you know, science today, they're now they're acknowledging, yeah, what the ancient sages were saying, which the fallen angels were, uh, knew about reality 5,000 years ago. Hmm. You know, and then um, we go on with all this stuff here, and I just want to point out some of the publications here. Uh, just connect the dots here. Yeah. So, mystery of the seven sages and ancient myths and legends. Mm. And uh, the uh, Pakula, uh, the demigods who were seven sages. And it just goes on here. And were seven unknown men, the seven sages in India. Who were they? They're asking, right? The seven sages of ancient Greece. There's some pictures of them, right? Seven sages of the bamboo grove in China. You notice again, uh, seven sages everywhere. You know, and uh, you got all these publications uh, that talk about this stuff. And China, yeah, meet the hippies of the China, the seven bamboo sages. Now, these uh, ones here, they were hippies in China over 1,700 years ago. We're talking freedom-loving uh, Hinduists want to escape the restrictive Confucians of, uh, during the brief Three Kingdoms period so the Daoism with a connection with nature was much better fit for the lot and provided a framework for beyond their worldly frustration. So, and obviously these, uh, you know, when we talked about the Order of the Serpent, and there's always been some kind of seven sages all through time. So originally it was the fallen angels, then when they got cast to certain prisons and all that. And if you look like the star system, please in Orion, 
and um, the, the, a lot of some of those angels were cast into there too. It was crazy, but um, the Nephilim would take over. Then they would have appointed key figures like the Elitists that would take uh, order, or you know, continue the order of the serpent. And they would, they would always have these seven key people that they're the ones who directly preserved the knowledge that was passed down. So basically, they were the holders of the knowledge of the ancient days. So the fallen angels would pass it down to the next. Uh, line of people that would be the seven sages then so on and so even to this day there's probably seven sages but probably in the Illuminati for all we know you know uh, that uh, continue with the uh, you know first hand knowledge that's been directly passed down to them of the seven sacred sciences so you guys see that all, all over the place uh, all correlations of so many different you know what I mean and if you want to know you want to go into quasi quarter oh yeah you want me to talk about that? That's the, um, so, you know, here we are with the seven sages again, right? So Aztecian, so Quasi Quato had a brother. So the brother supposedly, according to the information that has been given that I can so-called bring to the table here, because sometimes I tread lightly on stuff that I present. Um, but this name is documented. It has to do with like Kukalkin and the Quasi Quato. It's going to take, like Brother Dan said, this was a big, there's a lot of big words tonight. Tesca Lapoca. Tesca Lapoca is the brother of Quasi Quato. Quasi Quato, Tesca Lapoca was the first, supposedly first root raced and supposedly this being had like master of wisdom and he was uh, supposedly a dictator governor of that that race of beings race of people and um the character would there's all kinds of mythical stuff that goes along with it but i want to bring this up one moment dan i have my notes here i have somebody in front of me i'm turning to david Carico. um <laughs> That's that's hilarious. Um, it was like a meaning a smoking mirror, a god of a great bear constellation in the night sky. Okay, so he would. Um, I'm trying to get my notes here. Uh, he was associated with very uh, concepts that include the night sky, hurricanes, uh, obsidian conflict. He was considered uh, a primordial dual deity. Uh, main festival was a uh, Toxicata, which was the most religious festival of Aztec culture involved human sacrifice. So there's that. And that was supposedly the first root race. So miraculously on down the road after that first polar, it's called the polar first root race was the polar first root race. And um, after that era was over with the next one, Hyperborean race was the Quasi Quato, which you have on the screen. Quasi, Quasi Quato uh, ruled and governed that second root race, supposedly, Hyperborean of uh, humanity. And supposedly, this is, you know, we got to take it for the grain of salt, uh, the generation, re, excuse me, degeneration people of the second root race converted themselves into monkeys. Okay, so I know what you're getting ready to say, Planet of Apes, and you're like, Brian, you went off the deep end, but this is what is out there in the academia world. But some, they'll say that the, their ancestors, and this is where you get into the evolution and which the Darwinism and this stuff, which me and Brother Dan are totally against. And then you talk about the uh, connection with the apes and that we're, you know, like it's us, like we're from the apes. That's not true at all. It's actually the opposite. I've said this many times. I even read a, uh, a document the other day that all the evidence shows that the that the apes and the monkeys come from us. They are actually, and I've, I mean, I've said it here on many times on, on Spiritual Warfare Friday, I think it's a genetically modified uh, uh, creature. I hate to say it. I mean, it is what it is. And that's why they're doing studies on that. And, you know, the brain activity and everything, it, they come from us. We don't come from them. So they supposedly in this uh, second root race with Quasi Quato, there was these uh, great... Uh, plants that trunk that sprout sprouted many branches and they were wiped out by strong hurricanes it kind of reminds me of the trees uh the the tall trees and there's like the vegetation everywhere right there's these giant trees that reach to heaven it makes me think of that when i'm reading that 
Um, so yeah, folks, the quasi quarto all goes back to Aztecian, but the interesting thing is the the way the interpretation is of all that. But then there's also information, like I said, and I totally agree with it. The monkeys don't come from us. I mean, excuse me, the monkey. We don't come from the monkeys, but the monkeys come from us. Mm -hmm. And that goes along with what me, uh, me and brother Dan have talked mm -hmm. about, even during this program, fallen angel technology and everything, as far as manipulation of the, and that's what the book Enoch talks about too, that they, um, not only did the angels, the sons of God made, you know, made it with the daughters of men and they bore giants. They also manipulated the, the insects, the other animals that roam the earth also. So that's where you get all this manipulation genetically. So the next one, uh, the third root, uh, third root race was Lemuria. Lemuria, we just mentioned that earlier, uh, which is inhabited in the, you know, the Pacific Ocean. So it perished by, supposedly it perished by fire, raining from the sun, volcanoes and earthquakes. And the root race was governed by the Aztec's god. Let me make sure I got my notes here. The Aztec god, uh, let's see, Tealoc. Yeah, the Aztec god Tealoc. Uh, the reproduction was made by germination, germination, Lemura was a very intensive continent. It was a way, but basically from what I'm understanding, it was all, I guess, altered in some shape or form, but the Tealoc, Tealoc has the ability. One of them has the ability, Dan, to do something with snakes. I don't know if it's quasi, -qual quasi quality, well, obviously, but was, uh... Go ahead. But Tealoc, I got it right here. Tealoc would, uh, God of lightning, rain and earthquakes. Uh, so he would bring, he would make it rain and make it, uh, make the earth, uh, crack open like a, uh, tinfoil can. So suppose sac human sacrifices in his name. Mm -hmm. So there's always that human sacrifice and the accessing of, um, his followers were one of the oldest and most universal in ancient Mexico. He was feared, uh, with his power over hail, thunder, lightning, and even rain. He also uh, associated with caves, springs, and mountains, most specifically the uh, sacred mountains, so hello, where he was believed to reside. So isn't that interesting? And he, he did many uh, rituals and sacrifices that were held in his name. So there's that one. So here's where it gets really interesting, folks. So you got the third root race. And that's the Lemira race, which I mentioned earlier with the giant heads, with the third eye, with the tumorous bulge coming out of their head. And they was able to do cosmic ability to physically alter things. And that's what this uh, Tealoc about germination and talking about changing the landscape through rain and different means of lightning, etc. Kind of makes you think of the, uh, you know, Lucifer falling from heaven, yeah. like, you know, bolt of lightning. And then the fourth root race, here we go, folks, was the Lanteans. The Lanteans uh, had a govern governor, right? I know I, this one, I butchered it too, but I'm going to make sure I get it right. Uh, Tonicia, I think that's how you pronounce it. Tonicia. The uh, fourth root race of Atlanteans was governed by the Aztec god Tonicia. Uh, it was the pre Columbian tribes of America. And supposedly, based off the information here, that these are the descendants of the root race, as well as the primeval, primeval Chinese and uh, Egyptians, etc. So this means, he means this being, uh, this entity, Tonishi was like a sun eagle. So, you know, we get into the Phoenix and we get into a lot of different things. The New Atlantis, you know, we can get into you know, the political realm there and all these different things that's happened and there's this country and we could go on a big tangent with that, but for the sake of video, I'm not going to go on that, but was Tonicia a giant? There's information that he, this individual that governed was a giant, mm -hmm. uh, to uh, Tolok. Yeah. Tolok was one quasi Qualto was depicted as a giant being. Okay. All these beings, the four that I mentioned, uh, that go to the fourth root race to the Atlanteans, was all giants. Well, here's where it gets really weird, folks. The fifth is the Aryan race. You hear about this all the time. Me and Brother Dan's talked about this during the Spiritual Warfare Friday with Admiral Byrd and all these different things with the Aryans and Hitler's looking for the Aryan race and the, you know, the blonde hair, blue eye, all that good stuff. So here's where it gets interesting. The fifth Aryan race, root race, was uh, it's literally talking about the way it's suggested here. It says that it's presented as the Aryan race is the present. 
And it will end with a great cataclysm, according to their information. I had to go down a deep rabbit hole, folks, to get this information. It was kind of like, really? And then I had to ask for discernment and pray God would direct me to present this information because a lot of this stuff, like I said, pray about it. Don't just kind of brush it off and just use it for information purposes. Don't dwell on it. That's what I would give advice to. Uh, just read your Bible and move on. But this, for the sake of this video, and uh, so me and Dan can expose these things, I think it's very informative. So basically, there's a cataclysm supposedly on the horizon, whatever. But uh, there's no governing, according to this root race of the Aryan races. But all the information that I'm reading is that these so-called beings prior for third, second, one, root race that it was pretty pretty dark stuff Dan. we discussed yeah. before we did the program that uh supposedly all the information was say that the offspring of what we would say the sons of god <laughs> made with the daughters of men in genesis 6 verse 4 would all correspond with this whole Aryan race fifth race root race and the other first four races uh was governed by giants so to speak and then the, you get to this uh Aryan root race the fifth one and that this is where it gets really dark too. There's any information that the Aryans, they could, uh, the giants could actually transport or trans or somehow alter their size and turn into a average size human and go around and govern. So I thought that was interesting too when I was reading that information about. Uh, and then the you know I'm always looking for Nephilim, so it's kind of interesting mm. to kind of summarize it and come to the conclusion of this. They they you know, was speculating that all these things, that all these characters, there was information as far as the genetically altering and all that, that there was traces of humans to this day that would be the descendants of the, literally, we're talking about giants here. I'm not saying all, but I'm saying, and I I would agree, you know, there has been, there's been some alter, you know, weird anomalies, six toes, six fingers, uh, genetically altered. I'm not saying that there's 20 footers running around, but there is some weird anomalies. Yeah. So the Aryan race, the Aryan race is very strange, uh, Dan. And I know that you got a lot to talk about, but I wanted to bring that up. There's four root races with these gods. And then all of a sudden the Aryan race comes up and there's not really nothing dictating it in that shape or form. It's almost like, did we arrive at certain things? Did these fallen give us so many, did we, you know, after all these other, you know, so let's just, Roll with me here. All these root races, was there so many sacrifices to the quasi-qualto and, uh, you know, like a astronomical events of something with a fallen angel narrative that they, they did so many sacrifices, they got to certain so much uh, knowledge that we've come to this one, like, I guess you hate to use the word, but we come around the corner that the enlightenment has happened. You're right. The You know, we've all, there's evolution is what the academia world would say, but I don't, I don't buy that. What do you think, Dan? I'm oh, that, that. Um, yeah. And the thing is, like, it's hard to believe anything the academia world says anymore, you know, because they like to dismiss the truth. And, and if they have to talk about the truth, they'll just try to downplay it or blow smoke about it. So, yeah. um, you know, we talk about all these beings and all these, like, sages and all this stuff. So I want to get to, you know, first of all, um, we get, you know, Genesis chapter 6. I mean, uh, Enoch chapter 6 is verbatim, so... Uh, usually I like to read the Genesis one, but I'm not going to do that because of the sake of time, whatever. But um, what I'm trying to point out here is the book of Enoch here. So in the book of Enoch, it talks about who these people are. And, you know, so basically, you know, Enoch 6 is, talks about, which is again verbatim for Genesis. So when it came to pass, when the children of the men, of men had multiplied on the earth in those days and were born unto them were beautiful and comely daughters. And angels, the children of the heaven, saw, which are the fallen angels he's talking about, saw and lusted after them, said to one another, Come, let us choose wives from among the children of men and begot us uh, children. So, and Sam Jiza, who is their leader, said unto them, I fear not that indeed to do this deed, this, uh, uh, agree to do this deed, I alone shall not have to pay the penalty of great sin. So, uh, anybody asks, is there any question? Well, why is um why doesn't God forgive the fallen angels? Well, here's why. Because number one, they knew darn well what the hell they were doing to begin with. Because Sam Jaisa with the other fallen angels, he's like, listen, like, 
I'm not going to have to be the only one to pay for this penalty because they knew darn well what they were doing. And this here was a, a huge attempt to thwart the coming of Jesus Christ because they knew Jesus to be born in the flesh had to be from the perfect seed. That's why God told um, Noah that you're perfect in your generations. Not that Noah, Noah is a perfect man. You know, he sinned too, but he loved God. God loved him. And his DNA, his genetic code was perfect the way he made to, uh, the bloodline of Adam. So their goal here was to distort the bloodline of humanity by having children with the daughters there and everything else still. I mean, and these Nephilim, you know, with the, you know, they were the children of the fallen angels. They had sex with anything that walked, literally. Dogs, animals, it didn't matter. Because in Genesis 6, it says all flesh was corrupt. So, anyway, Sim Jaiza, the leader, he, had, and they, uh, he told them, all the other angels, hey, listen, I'm not going to be the only one who have to pay for this great sin. So, and they all answered him and said, let us all swear an oath and bind ourselves on mutual implications not to abandon this plan, but to do this thing, because this is the plan here. So, and they swore, all swore together and bound themselves by a mutual implication upon it. So, they swore an oath, knowing damn well what the hell were they were doing. That's why God doesn't forgive the fallen angels. That's why they're going to go to the lake of fire in the judgment day. So, that's why. It's not like, oh, like, um, you know, angel just happened to fall in love with a, a woman that was nice. No, they had a plan. The whole plan was to have sex with the daughters of man to corrupt the bloodline of humanity. That's what it was about. It wasn't an angel accidentally falling in love. You know, nothing like that. It was not innocent at all. That's why they're not going to be forgiven. So, and there were 200 who descended in those days on Jared, on the Mount of Her Mount Hermon. And they called it Mount Hermon because they had sworn and bound themselves by mutual implications upon it. That's where the oath was taken. So, these are the names of their leaders. Now, this is uh, some of the names of people. Some of these angels are some of those these seven sages that ran around after the flood all over the world to help establish uh, kingdoms all over the world. And Sam Jaiza, the leader, or, and again, I'm going to butcher these names, uh, Rapiel, uh, Ramiel, Kakabiel, Tamiel, Ramiel, Daniel, Ezekiel, Bariquiel, Asael, Amaros, Betrayal, uh, Anil, Z uh, Z Quee, uh, yes, Quill, <laughs> uh, Sempsipio, uh, Satriel, Turiel, Jamiel, and Sariel. And these are the chief of tens. So it goes on, chapter 7 says, And all of the others together took them with waves, in which they chose for themselves, and one uh, to begin to go into them, to defile themselves with them, and yeah, to have sex with them. And they taught, and this is where, you know, they taught humanity things, different things too in other cultures later on. They taught them charms and enchantments, cutting of roots, made it to acquainted with plants. And they became pregnant and bare great giants whose height was 3,000 L's. And who consumed the, all the acquisitions of men and the men could no longer sustain them. And the giants turned against them and devoured mankind. And they began to sin with bir against birds. Like I said, they had sex with anything. They sinned against birds, beasts, reptiles, fish, and devour one another's flesh, and they drank blood, and the earth laid acquisition against the lowest one. And this is where the, um, the angels taught, some of the description where angels taught, Azaziel taught mankind how to make swords, knives, and shields, and breastplates, and made them known to the metals of the earth, how to work the metals of the earth, and the art of working them, and bracelets, and ornaments, and use of anonymity, and beautifying the eyelids of all kinds of costly stones and colored tinctures. So basically jewelry for the woman, right? And there arose much godliness, and they committed fornication, having sex. They were led astray and became corrupt in all their ways. And Sam Jaiza taught enchantments and cutting of roots, which was like uh, an alchemy and everything else, resolving enchantments and brachial, taught astrology, that's one of the seven sacred sciences right there, but again, it's the, the bastardized version of it. Uh, Kobio, the constellations. Ezekiel, the knowledge of the clouds. Arachiel, the signs of the earth. Shemsio, the uh, signs of sun, the sun. And Seriel, the course of the moon, and men persisted, perished, I'm sorry, and they cried out, and they, the cry went up to heaven. So I'm going to skip ahead here to this chapter. Uh, one second here. LXIX, LXIX. All 
over here. So I think this chapter, right? So anyway, I just want to get into the description. So these are the chief of their, and uh, I'm not going to name them all again because I butchered half of them, but they're named again. And it says, and these are the chiefs of the angels in their names, and the chief ones over hundreds of, over 50s and over 10s. And one was uh, Japan, the first who led astray all the sons of God and brought them down to earth and led them astray to the daughters of men. So this is probably Satan right there. Another name for Satan. And the second was Asibio. He parted in part of sight the holy sons of God, evil counselors, and led them astray to defile the bodies with the daughters of men. And there was uh, Gabriel. He showed the children of men uh, all the blows of death to them how to kill people and led astray Eve showed and the weapons of death, sons of men, the shield of uh, coat of mail, and the sword, you know, uh, battle armor and all that stuff, and the weapons of death of children, and it goes on to say about um, yeah, it's, uh, um, uh, yeah, I missed the the verse over there. So anyway, they taught them how to commit abortions. You know, certain angels taught uh, men how to commit abortions, how to do this, how to do that, to build things, and it just, you know, the whole book of Enoch just goes to where by a uh, it was an angel named Caseda who taught. Mankind, how to kill the embryo in the womb, but they go through the every angel in detail of what they did, what they taught mankind, how to mix metals and this, you know, build certain things and all that. So these were great builders, and uh, that's why a lot of these angels that because right away when God, like He went on a rampage, and most of these angels were locked up immediately. You know what I mean? You'll find that out through the scriptures and everything else. And some of them were left purposely, uh, God, because God has a plan to be fulfilled. And some of these angels are still around, you know, but they do different things right now. But these were known as the seven sages later on. This is, at, you know, during, you know, before the flood. And the seven sages came along after the flood. That, you know, there were seven of these angels that went from culture to culture all over the world. And it was wild because, like, no one in his family had to populate the world again. So you're looking at a couple hundred years. And when, you know, the. And that you know when Babylon came, sorry, let me rephrase that. Uh, they repopulated the world, then Babylon came along, and you know, of course, the population was exploded. Then God split the languages up because He said, "Be fruitful and multiply." Go, He says, "Go into the world and multiply." Right? They don't want to listen, so they want to stay in that one kingdom of Babylon and build the Tower of Heaven. So God split all the them confounding their languages and all that, and they had no choice to to go all the parts of the world. And they took different languages with them in the splinter of Babylonian religion. So these, um, because of the state of the confusion, the fallen angels, these seven fallen angels, seven sages, right? They went to every one of these cultures to help them reestablish this uh, once great knowledge. Because remember, it's the same knowledge that built the Tower of Babylon. So they reestablished these things in uh, I, uh, China, ancient China, ancient Greece, uh, Aztec, Mayans, uh, all, all over the place. You know what I mean? And uh, they helped them build these things and also, again, teach them the corrupt version of the seven sacred sciences. So that's why, in, uh, you know, to be short on this in general, that's why when you look at every one of these cultures, again, I'm going to repeat myself, every one of these cultures, they had. The same stories. Again, the names of the, you know, the sages are different. The original sages, they're different, but it's the same people. You know, same, same fallen angels. And, uh, and they taught mankind how to do these things. So, sorry to repeat myself, but sometimes you just got to do that because you've got to emphasize these things because now it makes more sense. So now when you go read uh, my ancient Mayan history next time, when you go read uh, ancient Greece, ancient China... Uh, ancient Egyptian, Babylonian, Mesopotamian, Sumerian, go down the list. And you're going to find every one of these things all have one thing in common. Speaking of the same stuff, these beings, you know, they bought, thought they come from the sky, which ain't too far off because they didn't, yeah, they did come from the sky, literally, but they're not from other planets. They came from heaven. They were cast down to the earth. And, uh, you know, to the you know, ancients, they thought they, you know, when they see these things come out of the sky, like, what are you going to think, you know? You don't know nothing about heaven or nothing at that point right there. So that's why they all have the same description. That's what I'm trying to say. Every one of these ancient cultures have the same description. So for academia to go out and say, oh, it's just folklore mythology. Yeah, because 
hundreds of Asian cultures all over the world and all that just make all the stuff up that happens to be, happens to be the same stories, the same uh, techniques that the angels did, happens to all match together. Hmm. And again, the names are different in diff- you know, different cultures, but the sa- same stuff. You, you, it's like to make that up, okay, to, for that to be a coincidence, uh, you would have a better chance of hitting a Powerball jackpot, the American Powerball jackpot. You would have a better chance to hit that 100 times in a row than for that to be a coincidence of that major, uh, you know what I mean? Like you, it's off the chart, the scale of it. I can't even compare anything. It probably a thousand times hitting a power ball in a row, you know what I mean? But it, 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 it's not a coincidence. And these blokes in academia to even remotely say, oh, it's a coincidence. No, it's not a coincidence. You, the, you know, the numbers are astronom- uh, astronomical to even make up to even compare anything to it to, for that to be a coincidence. Oh, I will make this point for them to be able to pull it off and keep doing it yeah. and where it's just like recycled and it's like an infinite loop, just recycled the same old stuff. And it's like the architects of these, you know, we're talking about these entities that, you know, these divine, I guess, angels or whatever. You would think they would come up with something different, but they don't have to. Yeah, It's because everybody dies off and they just recycle it. And then everybody gets born. Again. You know, there's no people that get born in the earth. And then the cycle just goes on and on and on. And then get away with it. And everybody's so gullible mm-hmm. to jump on whatever. Yeah. I mean, and then while they're doing that, the Son of God, you know, Jesus Christ, they're moving away from all biblical narrative and they're doing all these nefarious things along the way. And that's what the UFO, that's why I mentioned with, you know, Tucker Carlson and all these uh, mainstream media and everything's pushing the UFO phenomenon. I think it's coming to where it's going to start that same you know mess recycling the same old regurgitating the same old trash over and over mm-hmm. and um the big show h and aliens which i've been on for 20, 10 years now, oh man least. more than 10 no it's been more than 10 it's been yeah, more than 10 history channel and it's, mm-hmm. uh, it's still the biggest show and mm-hmm. good the only good thing out of, out of that show the only good thing is because it's caused a uh, history channel to move away from the evolution doctrine it really has because now they're teaching less evolution and more of this stuff. But there's a lot of truth to it, the ancient aliens, absolutely. But again, they're not from outer space, okay? They are not from other planets. They're not gods that fallen angels, plain and simple. So the ancient aliens are basically, and they even said they're coming back. The Bible says that too. And Revelation chapter 16, you know, three unclean spirits that look like frogs, they're going to be the three representatives, obviously, but they're coming back and people are going to think they're aliens. And uh, you notice how the History Channel keeps peddling. Oh, there are creators. The movie The Knowing with Nicolas Cage, that was a big movie. Mm-hmm. And yeah. at the moment, the movie shows um, them saving, you know, the whole planet, one little boy and one little girl, and they take them to another planet uh, with a, a tree in the middle, the Garden of Eden. You know what I mean? Yeah. And, and show the point that these were our creators. That's the whole concept of this new age of philosophy, that they're our creators. They're not our creators. They're the sons of our creator. <laughs> you know, so that's um, the twist to it. Now, again, like I said, there's lots of truth to what they teach, but they take the truth and convolute it with their, you know, occultic garbage. That's the problem with it. And that's what the seven sacred sciences we talked about. Yeah, uh, we'll go through that real quick. So grammar, let's learn how to spell. No, nothing wrong with that. But they use it for nefarious ways. And um, rhetoric, it's like, um, what is that? Like philosophy and everything? And, yeah. Yeah, right. and, they, and they take that to a whole new level. You look, uh, Manly P. Hall, he was a philosopher. But these people are twisted. If you look at their work, they are completely twisted. They take the occultic side of it, right? Then you got logic, right? Their version of logic is, <laughs> yeah, whatever the case. Arithmetic is math, right? So now you get, you know, basic math was good to teach, right? So what they did was, I got to stop saying right, by the way, I keep saying it. But um, um, arithmetic, they took and created uh, gematria and numerology, Pythagoras did. So they take something simple that God wanted us to learn and take it to a whole new level. And now here's the thing. We understand gematria, numerology. There's some truth to it, absolutely. Because um, these people do things on certain dates with certain numbers. But some people take it way too far, really too far. I can literally take any name and turn it into 666. Any number, I could finagle the numbers to make it anything I want. These people are just ridiculous. I'll take somebody's name, right? And say, oh, it's a, 
you know, this numerology stuff. It's 666 six, six or something. And they'll, they'll contort it that way when it's really not. They, you could take Dan Badani and Brian Reese, and somehow you could come up with 666 six, six with Gematria. Somehow. Does it mean we're Satanists? No, not at all. You know, then, so that's why I tell people just stay away from that crap. It really is. And most of it is crap. Um, I went down that rabbit hole before, and then, then yeah, that's what you do. You're sitting here constantly playing with numbers or everything. Then you, you, yeah, some of the stuff is real, but most of it's just like, you know, people just make stuff out of their there. Then you got geometry, right? And, you know, teaching how to build things and all that stuff. Sacred geometry. Now, again, they design things in cultic ways, like pyramids and all that. That's where that stuff comes from. Uh, music, and, you know, Satan was what? The God, um, angel of music, right? So you got, you, uh, the Lord says make a cheerful noise unto him, right? Saying mm-hmm. that music is beautiful, right? But Satan has a corrupt version of it. Now, look, we don't have to explain too much about music. Look at the music out there that influences people to go take drugs, to rape people, uh, all kinds of, st- you know, the rap videos out there, and some of the old rock to go worship Satan. You know what I'm saying? Music does this. And, uh, you know, you got these performers on stage. And they're just, it's entertainment, that's all it is. But these people live this lifestyle. The whole room's decorated with mm-hmm. um, um, Metallica or whatever the case, or uh, Run DMC, whatever. They live that whole life in it, off of entertainment. That's all it is, it's entertainment. Yeah. So, you know, and that's how, again, they take something that God designed, you know, this part, the sixth part of the seven sacred sciences, and contort it to something evil. Then astronomy, right? Once again, I mentioned at the beginning of the program, or how they contort in astronomy. So in Genesis, God says to use the stars that he planted there with his own hands, right? Use the stars for signs and seasons and for prophecies and everything else, right? So the occult version would take that and create, because that's biblical cosmology. They'll take mm-hmm. and create astronomy, like their version of astronomy, is to say we could, uh, astrology, I'm sorry. So they take astronomy and turn it into astrology. So mm-hmm. astrology is a perverted version of astronomy. Now, today in the, in the academic world, when you learn astronomy, it's the complete twisted version of biblical cosmology. Not to confuse people, but long story short, they take astronomy of what God's taught, and it, which is uh, biblical cosmology, and then they t- take it and completely say, oh, well, we revolve around the sun, we're just uh, you know, a ball of, b- balls of gas floating everywhere, it's just ridiculous stuff, right? Then they'll take it and say, we can tell you a future, this is where they go beyond that. They can tell you a future off the, uh, your birth date, which is stupid. To even So you got millions of people on the earth right now that are born, like I was born June 26, right? So they say, oh, you're a cancer. So everybody that's linked to a cancer, that's like a, like two, uh, I think a half of June and half of July, whatever. And so everybody's a cancer, so you're supposed to have the same luck or same, you know, it's, it's, it's dumb, really is. But that's how they pervert it. So they pervert the seven sacred sciences that God taught Adam uh, Seth and uh, Cain, and again Cain took this. He Cain and his son Enoch, the evil one, they communicated with the fallen angels. So now they knew about the deluge coming, the fall, uh, the flood coming. So what they did is they had to take uh, their bastardized version of the sec- seven sacred sciences, and they put it together like uh, uh, the Emerald Tablets of Thoth and all that. They put it in these tablets and put them in tombs to survive the flood. So after the flood, and I mentioned this at the beginning of the program, sorry, I repeat myself, but after the flood. That's when the sages took the knowledge to show it to mankind and decode the symbols and everything else with that. And that's what all this comes from. Symbolism, uh, numerology, all that stuff. It's all garbage. It really is. And, that, you know, this is uh, why the seven sages did what they did. Number one, the first mission was to try to watch from Jesus to be able to ever be born. That failed. So when God, you know, hit the reset button, their next goal was just to corrupt mankind. You know, so now we got the days of Noah coming. Like the, it literally is, it's becoming like the days of Noah. Disgusting stuff going on, and so it's all I can say right now, man. Now, <laughs> let's go. Anything else, Brian? Well said, Dan. Mm-hmm. Like I'm sitting here, like listening to you, and it's just, you know, the. Mm. I, I mean, words. I just I lose my words because it's just, uh, it's it's here. They're they're. They're doing things in plain sight. The stuff that me and Dan's touched based on tonight, just a just a few things. It's just dust compared to what these people yeah. know. You know, when they're coming to the higher, you know, as far as the elect, you know, not the elect, but the elitist, they're uh, well versed in what they know. 
They've been taught all the mystery schools, everything from, you know, the ancient Tower of Babylon. I mean, heck, everything probably from Chichen Itza, from the quasi Qualter. They, they probably know what they probably been teach, been taught it when they was two years old. You know, the while we was sitting here getting spoon fed nonsense, you know, so as far as education level. And I can only imagine how many, how many advanced years, even the people that are living today, that are in the, you know, the higher up ranks, supposedly higher, they think they're higher. Um, I can only imagine how much, how much they're, you know, one thing, how much can they retain of it? Because even the stuff that we talked about tonight, we're having trouble even articulating the words because it's not yeah. something we use on a daily basis. Right. Yeah. And it's not, it's not American language. So it's like, okay. And, um, I can only imagine somebody can read 10 different languages or 15 different languages or ancient, ancient uh, languages and able, still able to retain all this knowledge without having help. You, you see what I'm saying, Dan? There's that's just no the way. That's the hard part about it. It was like, the thing is, me and Brian study this stuff all the time. So to us, it's like, yeah, you know, we, we understand it. But to try to take this complication stuff and articulate it to the general public it's very hard to do that's why i'm stumbling words he's stumbling words today because it's to try to take something like that and try to um simplify it the best we can without trying to confuse people you know but at the same time we have to do this anyway because the world is out there is using the stuff to confuse people going the other way you know so that's why we need to be on top of these things and all that and um, we didn't get to the, um, you know, fully with the serpents and everything, with the serpent gods and all that, which we should do a show called the Ser uh, Seed of the Serpent. We get to more details about that. But that's nothing that's not a coincidence either. All these top so-called gods, right, have a serpent dragon-like feature or a bull, whatever, because it's Satan. It's Satan and it's just a seed of the serpent going through the time, you know. So that's why mm -hmm. uh, these things are the way they are. It's not a coincidence. Yeah, yeah, hundred percent. Yeah, like, it the okay. correlation, the stuff is dotting. You can't even. Yeah, it, it's everywhere, uh, and people. Well, here's the thing, you know, archaeologists out there will just look at it and everything that we present tonight. They just, oh yeah, just throw, just throw it to the side. These guys, these guys are quacks. They don't know what they're talking about. But then yeah. when they go out in the field and they start digging stuff up, they'll be like, oh look, everything I found was snakes all over it, right? So they find snakes all over everything and, um, you know, that whole thing, they would be like, wow, there's snakes on everything. But then they'd be like, oh, that guy, Dan and Brian, they was just foolish, right? So they won't even like go that far with thinking. They'll just shut their minds off. It's it's crazy. They'll shut their minds off and say that it doesn't exist. There's no ancient technology. There's nothing to do with any kind of sky gods or anything to do with giants or anything to do with blood sacrifices or anything. They might, they might scratch, they might scratch that and say, Oh yeah, we can, we can kind of get by with that. But the rest of it, they won't go there. <laughs> yeah. They won't, they not, won't. Not a they won't. That, uh, CERN and all these like uh, technologies are off of you know, perfect descriptions of ancient stargates. It's like, we did shows on that too, man. But yeah, you can't make the stuff up, and yeah, that, that's where they get the information from. These people, they don't come up with creativity stuff. They take ancient stuff and rebrand it. But if you look into it, they'll say, "No, no, it's only myth. Don't worry about that." Oh, if it's only myth, that's where you all get your information from. So it's not a myth, you know. And, uh, <laughs> yeah. it makes no sense. You know, it's a mind yeah. job. It is. It is. It is a. Uh, it's like. It's like when somebody drinks, you know, for example, when somebody drinks too much coffee and they're rambling on a hundred mile an hour, they're too yeah. much caffeinated, you know, and then it's like the analogy of when somebody doesn't have the coffee and you're trying to tell them all this, they're not awake, they're groggy, they're <laughs> sleepy and they can't retain it. Right. And it's like, it's crazy. I, I keto whenever, brains. yeah, keto brains from experience <laughs> with the, the journeys of me and Dan and John Hall. <laughs> Um, the adventures of the three amigos and our in a red uh, Mazda. But anyways, <laughs> um, yeah. So yeah, it's just real. It's just real crazy when you come down to it and really narrow it down. You know, like that's how they're gaslighting us twenty four seven. You know, the uh, stuff they're putting in. You know, are consume. You know, we're consuming stuff that may. I'm trying to watch my words. Consuming things that manipulate the mind, mm -hmm. and literally your 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 uh, brain is not activating like God wants it to, because you're consuming all this this stuff that's actually manipulating it, and then that's easier for them to just you know talk charismatically and speak very fluent words and be able to talk about 
you know, ancient aliens and tell them about this and that. And then they, people are like, oh, Dan and Brian are crazy, but I can listen to this guy. He's a high, he's on the high social, you know, the status of, you know, high social status, you know, of a being. Yeah, he's God, right? That's what people, and we've all been subjected. I used to do the same thing, you know, watch movies and, you know, get it caught up in the celebrity status thing and say, hey, look at this, look at that. But I really do think that all goes into play, Dan, yeah. with all the, it does. And then before you know it, it's like, hey, you know, we're all been hoodwinked, right? So, yeah, man. And uh, sir, um, back to Lance real quick. So, uh, sir Francis Bacon, you know, he was a huge occultist and everything else. Uh, he visioned this land here, we now call America. He actually visioned this as the New Atlantis. So mm -hmm. it was very uh, important that they founded this side of the world. You know, like uh, the because they, you know, the, there was two aspects of this. America means God's country, but the other side was like the occultists thought this was the New Atlantis. You know, it's kind of great. And also the new Babylon as well. So there's a lot of correlations with that as well. But yeah, uh, yeah. and again, you put all the stuff together. It's like, <laughs> you're going to see correlations with everything. We talked about, so you're going to see correlations with all this stuff. But um, we forgot to start off with a prayer. But uh, if, you, if you're all done, we can go to prayers. We got a couple prayer requests here. Yeah. Then we take yeah, some I'm... phone calls after that. And Yeah, that's fine, Dan. Um, yeah, it's been a it's been a good program. Yeah. Yeah. Um, the seven sages of Atlantis folks and uh just being prayer about because some of the stuff we talked about tonight I really want to emphasize that it's very dark you know I don't I don't, I don't feel comfortable talking about reincarnation or telepathic or telekinesis and yeah. you know I just don't and clairvoyant I just I, I I study it I understand it just for the for the concept of understanding and having clarity that what the enemy is doing you know, I don't go around saying, hey, I'm going to be a clairvoyant or I want to be a telepathic, you know, I want to be a remote viewer. That's not the case at all. Hmm. So I just want everybody to know that, that we we want the Holy Spirit to guide us, not nothing else. Amen. And uh, guys, I just want to point out this here. We got a donation page, too, if you want to make a donation contribution to the show here. Helps uh, support the ministry, helps support operation, the streaming services, our rumble and everything else. So those who you donated, thank you so much. And the best thing you can do is pray for us. That's number one. So anyway, we've got a couple of prayer requests here and um, one for Sister Kathleen. So we'll do this in prayer as well. But her granddaughter, she suffered major sleep paralysis and she thinks there's a lot of demonic infliction going on. And also Brother Harold McCain, who's in the chat. He's one of our, uh, I don't know if he's in there tonight, but he, he's, got, yep, hmm. he's got bad respiratory it. problems right now. And... And brother, uh, I'm sorry, sister Anne Marie, she still got her uh, foot pain. I guess she broke both her ankles a while ago and that excru excruciating, you know, literally her feet are broken. She broke both of her feet and that's, I remember breaking one toe and that was horrible. Imagine two feet. And also uh, sister Anne Marie, you know, runs, uh, I'm sorry, Anne, I'm sorry, Anne who runs shakeawakeradio.com. So if you want to keep them in your prayers and all that, so... <clears throat> <laughs> I think I'm coming down with a cough, man. I tell you, I got congestion in my throat. So, Jesus, Yeshua, Messiah, we come before you and we ask you for forgiveness of our sins individually. And we ask you, Heavenly Father, to touch us all, uh, to keep us fresh, keep us um, healthy, especially during these winter seasons, and to keep us all from uh, the forces of evil, keep us protected against the forces of evil. And we pray for um, our brother Harold McCain and uh, we, uh, with his um, respiratory problem. We pray for Sister Anne Marie with her feet and uh, S Sister Anne uh, with her health issues. And we pray for um, Kathleen's daughter, I'm mean, sorry, granddaughter, who suffered from sleep paralysis and even uh, she got raped in her sleep by a demon. And we actually ask you, Lord, to cover her, Lord, and protect her and bind her from any of those demons, Lord. And we pray, uh, Jesus, Yeshua, that you could pour your blood upon her to create a shield around her and to bring her to you, Lord, that she may confess that you are Lord and also at the same time to protect her from these demons. And the Holy Spirit, we ask you to put a wall of fire around her that no evil could penetrate her and to do harm and disgusting things to her, Lord. We ask you just to protect this child here. She's uh, 20, 25 years old and uh, she's still young. We ask you to just bring, 
bring witness to her, Lord, that she may repent of her sins and come to you, and also at the same time protect her from these demons. And um, I pray for Brother Brian here and his health issues and everything. And um, thank you, Lord, for just re helping me recover from the stroke and everything else. And uh, we pray for everybody out there. Brother Bill O'Connell, who's in the gym as well. He's up there trying to uh, just better his health. And you know, we pray for him to keep the you know, courage going and give him energy to do that. And we pray for everybody in the chat and everybody out there that needs some kind of a form of help, like um, psychologically, mentally, physically, whatever the case. And we love you so much, Father. And thank you for this great topic tonight. Thank you for giving us the wisdom to, um, to really expose the enemy like you tell us to expose the deeds of evil and we look forward for you to come back to put an end to all this evil in your mighty name we pray amen amen so guys we got um there's the phone lines here so 512-547-1776 and we're going to be back on a regular channel next week so you all see in the link and uh post it everywhere so if you notice the channel is a little different this is a backup channel so if you have not already please subscribe to this channel so, because what happens is, if something happens to our main channel, this is our backup, our fallback. So, if you're not subscribed to this channel right here, just go check real quick, hit the subscribe button. But we'll be back on our main channel, the Dan Benani Show channel, and uh, next week. And we're going to have David Carrico join us next week, too. That's going to be exciting. We're going to do and the, the next, annual Christmas yeah, show. <laughs> yeah, it's going to be awesome with uh, David Carrico, for sure. Um, then Elliot Mazzulli Cam the week after. Which, uh, oh, yeah, that's right. That's right. Yeah. Gonna be, this show is going to have a lot of correlation with that show. But. Yeah. The uh, David Carrico with him kind of doing the, the Christmas special is going to be fun. Yeah. yeah that's going to be fun. Mm -hmm. And uh, having L.A. Marzulli would be great, too, to have him on and talk about all kinds of different topics. Yeah. So yeah, UFOs so and giants. Yeah, that'd be – yeah. And then the – David Carrico is going to be bringing a lot to his uh, yearly Christmas special. You know, it's uh, always a hoot to hear what he has to say about that. There's so much information on the, the the pagan ties to that. So I'm looking forward to hearing from him on here. Yeah. yeah. Trying to get uh, Kathleen's page here. So, guys, um, this is the email address here. So if you're looking for these natural healing products, uh, the pain cream and all that, pain buster cream, uh, email her and she does got a page here. I'm trying to get it up on here. She just got a new Facebook page and I'm helping her with a website. So we should have a website for her pretty soon. Uh, so contact her on Facebook anyway if you want to get a hold of her. Her and her daughter just started up this business here selling all kinds of natural organic products. Let me get the page here. And if you go on Facebook, it's Kathleen Wynn. That's her photo there. Trying to get the page that she belongs to. So, yeah, she sells all these organic products here. So, good stuff, man. So, if you want to support her, go ahead. So, guys, uh, you know, give us a call. If not, well, yeah, we'll take some questions on the chat, too, here. So, we'll just put in capital letters. And people on Rumble, too, uh, put in the chat room if you want to ask any questions. Or if you just give us a call, either one. So, again, 512-547-1776. And probably you're not gonna get any calls tonight, probably because we're on our backup channel. So, and guys, uh, if you're watching this in the future, today is actually uh, December fifteenth of two thousand twenty-three. So, uh, next week we're gonna rebroadcast this on the main channel. So, if you're watching on the main channel next week, okay, the, uh, yeah, obviously we're not gonna be live. So, I want to point that out real quick. It's a great show, gentlemen. Thanks, DC Cooper. Yeah, yeah, thank Ellen you. Ellen Mizzouli is coming on uh, in two weeks, uh, the 29th. That's going to be fun. Good show. That is going to be cool. Absolutely. Thanks to Karen. Yeah, Karen's the one hooked us up. Yeah, 100%. Yeah, we appreciate, yeah, yeah, we appreciate it. Yeah, we appreciate it. Oh, yeah, which, by the way, we're going to give away her book next week. Uh, so we're going to do a book of the way. Um, her book, uh, The Stolen Seed. We had her on a few weeks ago. I've got it right. I've got it right here. Oh, yeah. Show that yeah. Minute. Yeah, I got it right here. So we're going to do a book giveaway, guys, next week. So just tune in. And I want to point out, too, guys, uh, because of the channel complication, because we got uh, dinged last week. So always go to truthradioshow.com. And we always have the link for where we're broadcasting. 
So if it's this channel or the next channel, whatever, if you go to truthradioshow.com, the link will always be there exactly. And you can actually watch it right off the website. It's pretty cool. So you'll never miss what channel we're on. So, yeah, thanks, Tactical Billy. What's he, Stoshian Fest? <laughs> so Joanne, what's up, Joanne? Yeah, somebody calling. <laughs> Tim's using yeah. the first one. Any, anybody call in, help us out tonight. Yeah. Yeah, last week we had, how many calls we have last week? Um, uh, 16 or 17. Yeah. Maybe 18. I can't remember exactly, but it was somewhere in that number. Yeah. Maybe we can get one and a half. Yeah. Anybody out there, one and a half. <laughs> <laughs> oh, all right. Well, I guess uh, nobody was calling tonight, so. You want me to call Dan? Yeah. Oh, that's brother Craig calling. Uh, go ahead. Craig is awesome. Hey, go Craig. Ahead. How you doing, brother? Uh, doing pretty good. How are y'all? Oh, pretty good. Hello, Craig. Hey, Brian. Uh, yeah, I had a couple of questions uh, regarding the Edgar Casey. Was he the one that uh, predicted or that uh, said that the Hall of Records was buried under the Sphinx. Um, that is a, go ahead, go ahead, Dan. No, I was just going to say, that's a good question because uh, I don't recall that. I know he's predicted the end of the world several times, and of course it came and went and nothing happened, but uh, the Hall of Records, I, I didn't hear about that one. The, um, yeah. That's a good question, Craig. I don't, I don't think... I know you're talking about, I'm trying to remember that individual's name. It might be him, but I'm not a hundred percent sure. Um, okay. I can't, I can't verify that, but that does sound the name. Ed, Edgar Casey. I know exactly what you're talking about. Uh, that, and then the, and then the tablets of the, uh, Emerald tablets and everything do correspond with that because they do, they, they say they found like 10 tablets underneath the pyramid. So that might be, it might be the same individual. I don't, I, I don't, can't give you a, indefinite answer on that okay yeah the uh second question i had was uh uh i remember watching a documentary uh it was a uh, it had a uh, the late tom horn in it and he was asked uh he was asked um you know was the lost city of Atlantis, was it where the uh, current Washington, D.C. is? And uh, I just wondered if y'all thought that was a possibility that the lost city of Atlantis was where the present day Washington, D.C. is. You want to go ahead first, Dan, or you want me to go first? Oh, go ahead. So the architect work up there in Washington and everything, that there's so much occulticness around that, but then there's tunnel systems supposedly underneath that lovely establishment. And I know there's a lot of conspiracy going around with, you know, people being in the tunnels and all that stuff underneath there. But I do know that his all up and down the East coast. And I mean, I've even looked up in the West coast, but a lot of it in the Eastern part of the United States, Atlantis all day. There's a Lantean, architect work everywhere. I can't give you a, a clear cut answer that Washington would have been where Atlantis resided, but it does make one wonder. Um, and then with the whole UN connection over there, not too far from there, you know, just, just in general, the UN being a foreign country and it's on American soil, but, um, yeah, there's so much, there's so many things, but yeah, that's a really good question. I'm sorry. I can't really give you a, I can't really give you a, a you know, a definite answer on that one either, but that's a really good question. Well, in my take here, uh, Sir Francis Bacon, uh, he uh, published his book in 1626. Uh, it's called The New Atlantis. Mm -hmm. And uh, he visioned here in America as the New Atlantis. Mm -hmm. So, uh, the, yeah. you know, referring to the New Atlantis. So, where you know, where he thinks the old Atlantis is, I don't know. But, I mean, I, I imagine yeah. Atlantis was destroyed during the, the flood, so... We have Plato and his account, and the yep. uh, Britannica. That's all kinds of. It, there, uh, 
there's just so many different things. I mean, I've even said that I thought the Atlantis was over there in um, where the eye of the Sahara is in uh, Africa. I've even speculated that there was some kind of outpost or something to that effect out that way. I've even, heck, I've even uh, said that the Atlantis could be hovering in the sky, like mm-hmm. part of it, because the because you look at the uh, technology they supposedly had where they could float large cities. So if they could do that, and I mean, it's even funny, they even made a Stargate, they made a, they made a show, Stargate Atlantis, where the actual uh, facility could fly. So, you know, it's it's kind of strange how all this is just the you just can't make this stuff up the comparisons with all of it it, it kind of gets a little scary when you think about it it's like hey this has been our face in the hollywood narrative and then you know it's like okay this is coming to life now <laughs> so yeah that's just my take yeah and uh yeah i noticed where they're coming out with the n- new movie about uh atlantean's uh aquaman sequel yeah, yeah it's just it's all the Atlantean stuff is just, it's just everywhere. Mm-hmm. Oh. It's, yeah. But, uh, I appreciate y'all taking my call and, uh, absolutely. I'll, I'll get off and, uh, Shabbat Shalom to y'all. Shabbat Shalom to you, brother. Shalom, Craig. All Thanks right. for calling in. Then we got brother Mike and brother Tim just trying to call. Oh, cool. So I call brother Tim. Woo! Woo! <laughs> What's up, brother? What's up, guys? I was just going to call in if no one else was. But, brother, there beat me to it. <laughs> Another great show, man. Yeah, How thanks, brother. Doing? Yeah, if everyone would, please keep me in your prayers. Just going through stuff. Oh, yeah. So, yeah, pr- please pray for our brother Tim here. So, yeah, yeah. God bless you, brother. <laughs> Well, you know. I wish we could build uh, one big community for all of us. That'd be awesome. Like, uh, you build everybody a house and the whole community. And Well, if if the will's there, mm. then the way can always be forged. Yeah. But anyhow, uh, I do. I pray for you guys. I pray for everybody in the chat. And uh, just shouting out. Yeah. Um, let's see. Uh, Oh, wait a minute. What What was Brian just talking about? Were you looking at rabbit holes in the sky? <laughs> no, not Are Bugs Bunny. About, Are you talking about Atlantis in the sky? Oh, Atlantis in the sky. That's something I have thought about and speculated on. Is that why Ozzy Osbourne <laughs> was seeing fire in the sky, all Atlantis is burning? That, uh, is that what he was that, talking about? That does make sense. That's kind of wild, ain't it? Yeah. I wonder. I wonder if he hmm. was seeing the reflections of the people's campfires on Atlantis. Huh. Yeah, it does make sense. That, uh, that's very. That's very uh, good observation there. Based off, yeah, that's awesome. Mm-hmm. Well, we we need to look into that. Yeah. To get to the bottom of it. Wait that know? down. What is it called? A uh, fire in the sky. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Yeah, I, mean, I was gonna first sing. Every- I would sing it. I would sing it, but I'm not going to. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I would too. But when I sing, it makes cats breed. So, <laughs> you know, I don't want Bob Barker turning over in his grave or whatever. Yeah, you gotta get your yes, cats neutered. <laughs> yeah, get your golden cat sprayed or neutered, spayed or neutered. But uh. <laughs> Anyway, have a great night, everybody. You too, have brother. A great yeah, thanks for calling have in. A great Sabbath and weekend. God bless everyone. And woo, woo. Okay, now we got another call, but um, Armando. I should take this one here. Nine five one. You're on here. What's your name? Hello. Hello. Oh, I guess not. So Mondo, he's like, you think um, ancient Maya civilization was post-flood or pre-flood? And I think, yeah, the ancient civilization, I think was, uh, yeah, definitely, uh, po- at least yeah, we know post-flood, but you think uh, Maya existed before the flood too? 
Well, could have been one of the places where they put the some of the, the tablets too. You know? I, I I really agree that a lot of the pyramids and everything and mm. my, yeah, Mayan civilization. I would I would say pre flood, but I think even Andalu, you know, we're talking about Andaluvian. I mean, I, I you know, there could be more advancements, and that could have been just another. Even that could have been you know not as old as what we don't even know. You know, it's underneath the ground. Yeah. I think there was some that's even predated longer, you know, the Andalusian realm. But, um, but yeah, I could see the Mayan. So I could see that. I, I really would. I would kind of shift toward that anyways because of all the Causey Quato and the mm. different connections with the, all the giants and stuff. I would, I would go a little bit, yeah, before the flood of Noah, absolutely, in some cases. It just depends on, well, the location. But, yeah, yeah, mm-hmm. As far as as far as location in Mexico and places like that, yeah. there's there's different there's different ages. You can you can prove that with Machu Picchu in, in Peru. Uh, there's different, uh, you know, even though it might be there, the foundation might be there. That doesn't mean that it wasn't. Yeah. Andaluvian. I hope that answers the question. Trying, brother Mike here. Brother Mike, what's up, brother? Hello. Hey, how you doing, brother? I'm Hello, doing Mike. Good. How are you guys? Pretty good. Hanging in there, Mike. Wow. Um, so I had trouble picking up my phone, but I finally picked it up off the floor. <laughs> uh, what was the show about again? Uh, Brian's milk truck. Uh oh. No, joking. No, it was about the seven sages of Atlantis, the fallen angels. Oh. Uh. Only true wisdom comes from God. Yep. Wow. So, like you guys were saying, ancient people weren't stupid. They were more advanced than we were. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, look at the structures, right? We can't even build nothing today. Uh, even the, it's, I, mean, I think it's pathetic. You know, the, the best construction Idiot. companies in the world... They have to have heavy machinery to move a rock that's like probably uh, uh, a tenth the size of the rocks they moved back then. You know what I'm saying? And they couldn't even build nothing that would last more than 10 years without maintenance. You know, back then they built structures that even to this day they're still standing. They've been mm -hmm. through so much weather and everything, and they're still there. I wonder if giants could have built the pyramids. Mm. Oh, yeah, that's a big possibility. Yeah. Um, well, Noah built the ark, and somebody built those pyramids. So ancient people were smarter than we are. Yeah. Yeah, the so Egyptians. Ancient people mistook those fallen angels for gods, little g, and they worshipped them. Mm -hmm. Yep. So they're they're like uh, Satan. Satan wants people to worship him too. Hmm. Yeah. So yeah, they, uh, go ahead. So I guess the, they would be, well, you know how it says the thief cometh not but for to steal and to kill and to destroy? I thought that's the way the demons are too. They want to destroy people. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, you know um, what the scripture says about that? I mean, about the. You know, the Nephilim creatures from the abyss in uh, Revelation uh, 16. What is it, 16? Uh, no, 16. Uh, Revelation yeah. 9, I'm sorry. They're going to come uh, kill one third of mankind that are not mocked by God. That's a lot of people. Yep. How do you get marked? Well, you be one of God's followers. You be a Christian and a follower of Jesus. Yep. So. Isn't there, that talks about the four angels bound in the great river Euphrates, too? Yep, yep. Yeah, because um, oh, yeah, the, the, two, the, the 200 million uh, uh, Nephilim there, they come from the abyss. So when they first come up in the earth, they're going to torture uh, mankind uh, for uh, five months, and only the mankind who are not mocked by God. Then when the four angels from the Euphrates River gets released, they lead the 200 million to go kill one-third of mankind who are not mocked by a god. 
Yeah, because I was asking uh, my tablet one time how many that was, and it was like two billion something, and I thought, wow. Yeah. Um, people would wish it was the Chinese or the Russians. That would be a lot easier than 200 million of those things. Yeah. And here's the thing, too. That I know there's a lot of ministries out there preaching that. We did a show on that, that they're saying the 200 million are China and Russia. But the thing is, China and Russia, they don't have, I mean, they combined. I think they have about 7 million. That's it. And if you take all the world's armies combined, that's the active, um, the uh, we call the the backup reserves and all that stuff and the militias. You only get maybe up to about forty million, if that. So uh, the two hundred million plus uh, the in Revelation nine at the beginning it says they come from the abyss. Then they they're literally they're like they're from like locust like creatures that have bodies of like lions and everything. So like uh -huh. that, yeah. And the thing is, that uh, China and Russia, yeah, then they're gonna be some of the military, uh, some of the people who are gonna be being tortured and killed too. Then plus China, Russia. I tell people all the time, China, Russia. How how are they going to know who's mocked by God and who's not? You know, so they yeah. don't have they don't know that. And uh, you know, and the thing is that these are the same people who take the supernatural out of the Bible. The same people says that angels can't have sex with women. The same people who say uh, you know uh, you know uh, you know the sky's not going to fall. Things like that. You know, they they take the supernatural out of the Bible, so they can't comprehend these things. But the Bible is very clear. And then the thing is, these ministries, they'll go say it's Russia and China, uh, but they don't read the whole chapter. And I say, if you guys read the from the beginning, it clearly tells you where they come from, the bottomless pet, and exactly what they are. You know, it's... <laughs> but, you know, of course, wow. they don't... You know, they take, take scripture out of context and add something that's not there. You know, they're, they're no... You know, again, the, the, all the world's armies combined, you get maybe about 40 million. That's it. Huh. And I listened to your show on Monday uh, that was a rerun with Trey Harris about the Sethite theory. Yep. Those are the same idiots that take the supernatural out of the Bible. That's ridiculous. Yeah, it is. If the Bible says the angels had sex with women and the women mm -hmm. had giants, then guess what? That's what happened. Yep. I don't you know, know where they get off of trying to say, oh, it's... um. You know the sons of God are referring to uh, the the children of Seth, or whatever. It's like, what do you get? The how do you know they they don't make no sense at all. And the Bible, they, you know, clarifies that the sons of God were the fallen angels because they are the the you know God said they're evil now, but they're still the sons of God. You know. Uh huh. And like if people say, well, it says that angels don't have sex. Well, these are fallen angels yeah. that are trying to wreck God's creation. Yep. And plus, they, they so went they in. Oh, and, go ahead. I'm sorry. No, I was saying them not being in them bold no more, which is heaven. And them not being there no more, they're here on the earth, so they're prone to the temptations here. You know what I'm saying? And uh, the, because in heaven, there's a different realm. You don't feel any of that stuff. You know, you feel holy and all that. Here on the earth, you you got uh, you're, you're prone to the, the temptations here. Like we are right now. If, if any of us to go to heaven right now, we wouldn't even think about sex. We wouldn't even think about uh, what I'm going to eat in the tomorrow. Uh, you know, the pleasures of life. We be, you know, we be like pure holy. But the second we left that heavenly realm, all those temptations will hit us like a brick in the face. Uh huh. Same thing happened to fallen angels because they were stricken. I mean, they, they didn't have godlike powers when they were thrown here. They had to rely off the you know the high IQ to get around, you know, technology and everything, they weren't able to fly, you know, just like jump up like Superman or something like that. They didn't have those kind of powers. And like Satan too, you know, you know, in the end times here, he doesn't have all these powers. Uh, he has powers through technology. He's, he's limited to what he could do. He can't raise people from the dead or just snap his finger and all of a sudden a uh, brand new Mustang appears or something. You know what I mean? Uh, he doesn't have magic like powers. It's off uh, the technology. That's how they uh, manipulate the world. Because why would he need uh, CERN? He wouldn't need uh, Project Blue Beam, nothing like that. He could just be able to snap his fingers and something happens. But, you know, like um, in the heavenly realm where God has, you know, his power there, um, the angels had certain abilities there. Or no, yeah, when uh, God sends his angels here, yes, they have abilities to do stuff, but that's only to, you know, a lot from God. But when they were thrown to the earth here, yeah, they were ripped of all those powers, whatever powers they did have. Mm -hmm. Oh, wow. 
Mm. Didn't they come down on Mount Hermon in Israel? Yeah. Yeah, Yeah, because it talks about the watchers in, uh, well, a watcher in the book of Daniel, and I thought that's talking about the fallen. Yep. The watchers, the fallen angels. Absolutely. So I agree with what you say, too, because people say Noah was perfect in his generation. Mm. He was a sinner. Everybody that's ever lived has been a sinner except Jesus. He was perfect and Mm. never sinned. Noah was perfect genetically. Mm -hmm. So they thought they could derail the coming of Jesus by contaminating the human genome. Yep, because they they knew the plan from day one. They knew the coming of the Messiah. They knew he would have to come in the perfect seed. You know, I mean, uh, Mm -hmm. Mary, she's from that bloodline, you know, so... They had to, their goal was to thwart that bloodline, to cut it off. And so this way, and I, and I think Jesus still would have came somehow, but, uh, you know, to, because they, their goal was to uh, distort the bloodline, to completely pollute it. So it wouldn't be holy enough to, um, you know, to, to host the seed of God. You know what I'm saying? Uh-huh. Well, even Herod tried to kill Jesus. Yep. So... Well, every attempt they had, even to this day, man, like they, every attempt that Satan has to do something, to try to do what something, you know, God throws a monkey wrench in the works. I I mentioned something about uh, Jesus, you know, dying on the cross and rising from the dead. Yep. And this idiot told me they were like, Jesus never existed, deal with it. And it's like, these people are such liars and yeah. they just love to argue. Yep. That'd be like me telling you my first name isn't Mike and I don't live in Ohio. I mean, this. Yeah, it's ridiculous, man. Yeah, and th- yeah, they, they, de- they deny the truth, that's all, you know. And, uh, and the thing is that it's, it scares them to know that the stuff's real. So they try to bring everybody else down with them. That's how they operate. Hmm. I mean, the dummies never think, what if all of the Bible's true? What if there's no mistakes or contradictions anywhere in the Bible? Yep. But I guess not. All right, well, uh, thank you for your call, brother. We got one more call and put another call tonight. I can, I can pray with you and Brian before I jump off here. That's yes. Cool. Yes, please. Thank you. Yeah, bless you, Mike. Okay. Um, God just help help Dan touch and strengthen him and help him. Thanks for letting him recover from his stroke and let him continue to recover. And God just help his brother Jason with his radio program. And God just be with Brian and all of his health challenges. And God just heal Brian. And God help Brian's dad who has cancer. God please touch and heal Brian's dad. And God, if he doesn't know you somehow, some way, please save save him and let him come to Jesus. And uh, just help the other prayer requests that Dan mentioned. Amen. Amen, brother. Thank you so much. Amen. Thank you, Mike. Okay. Yep. Love you guys. Love you too, brother. Bless you, my friend. Alrighty. Talk to you next week. Yep. See you okay. next week. Lord willing. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Okay, we'll take one more phone call. I'll try the nine one five one number again. I'm like tired today. It's like, ugh. You sound tired. Hello. Hey, how you doing, brother? What's your name? This is Dan. Oh, this is, uh, Chris. How's it going? Hey, what's up, Chris? Uh, not much. How you doing, Brian? Pretty good. Good. How you doing? How you doing, Chris? Uh, good. Good. <clears throat> yeah. So, um, I had a little um. Little uh, synthesis of a question to ask um, him thinking. Um, you're talking about these uh, seven sages, um, and they're, I guess, uh, Nephilim or whatever, or demons, I don't know, but um, some kind of spirits. But it's like, um, have you ever heard of that evil lady called Anne Rand? A- Ayn Rand? Yeah. Before? <laughs> yeah. Oh, that well. communist that um, she is? <laughs> she's, uh, she's into um, Discordianism, right? Which is like a um, like a 
you know, you know, like a um, Joker. Yeah. Like the Joker would tell the king something that uh, nobody else would, you know, because it was done in, in a comedy, right? Oh, a gesture. And uh, that's yeah. what they're doing nowadays. Yeah. Is uh, they're using discordianism to um, change culture to, towards, um, you know, um, postmodernism, right? Mm. So, well, postmodernism. That's like a, um, you know, how you have like traditional values. Well, it went from that to like modernism, which is like way worse than postmodernism. Is like way worse. It's like way off from the Bible. It's like it's like all into spiritual stuff. But anyways, um, what I'm what I'm wondering is, uh, do you guys think that um, they're using a lot of these philosophies to um, turn mankind against uh, God, the the uh, seven sages with their wisdom and their philosophies? Oh yeah, the, you know the fallen angels. Yeah. That's yeah. what I was thinking, you know? Yeah. No, because they match everything according to the scripture, what they taught men, you know, that book in Enoch as well. And uh, and you put that those two together, it's like perfectly, you know, and, and that's how they were able to be all over the world that, like that too, travel all over the world and for all those years. Because if they're just regular people, I mean, people were limited to a, after the flood 120 years. So it obviously took hundreds of years at least to uh, stop populating again after the flood. So, you know, you know, somebody wouldn't like live that long to uh, go all over the world like that, especially back then. So it had to be the you know the fallen angels to be able to do that. Oh, okay. You have the, that's what I thought. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> so I just want to um, tell the audience, you know, watch out for that, guys. You know, all these uh, philosophies, like uh, you know, the supermen with um, and chi and all these people. Uh, be careful about that stuff, guys. It's uh, a lot of it's just uh, evil stuff. Um, yeah. No, it is. Um, You're right. Words of uh, demons and things, you know? And yeah. So the, the only real um, solid uh, way to go is through the Bible. I know you guys know that, but um, just be aware they're using a lot of these philosophies to steer mankind wrong. Yep. These uh, seven, uh, you know, sages. Sages like uh, <laughs> wisdom, you know? So. Yeah. Okay. Uh, a lot of new ages do that stuff. Well. Okay, that's just all I wanted to um, run, run by you guys, you know, uh, see if you guys agreed, but yeah. All right, thank you, brother. Yeah, right, thank, thank you, Chris, for calling in. Shalom, yeah, brother. Thanks, Frank. So you guys have a good one. Shalom. You too. Later. Yeah, shalom. Uh, Bill tried to call, so let's give Bill a call. Bill O'Connell from Boston, Massachusetts. <laughs> and the reason why we know guy, uh, people's names, guys, because they're frequent calls and I saved the name. Hey, Brother Dan. Hey, Bill. What's up, brother? Hey, Bill. How you guys doing? Pretty good. How's Boston over there? Yeah, it's not too bad. It was in the 50s today, relatively warm. Yeah. I was thinking about these seven sages of Atlantis, and I kept thinking about uh, that Trump rally at the church two years ago when General Flynn started with the... Yeah. Uh, Elizabeth Clare Prophet prayer to the seven archangels and their rainbows and stuff. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you remember that one. You guys I, just downloaded it right there. Yeah, Take I know he's look at done a lot of New Age prayers. The first ray, Archangel Michael. The second ray, Archangel Joseph. The third ray, Chamuel and Charity. Gabriel and Hope, the fifth ray, Raphael and Mother Mary. Wow, it's, he had a whole church. He was reciting this New Age uh, satanic prayer there. Yeah. I, I was looking for it to see if I could find exactly the text of what he said. But you remember that from, like... I do, I, I do, Bill. I do, Bill. 2021 that... He like disappeared after that, though. Or... I yeah, do remember a that pretty, deal. Pretty. Uh... Oh, she even puts the Virgin of Guadalupe in there. But that was a Jim Caviezel thing recently, wasn't it? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Almighty threefold flame of life. What, what is this stuff? Yeah. I was just looking at the the, the thing. I. Accidentally uh, downloaded the PDF. I'm gonna have to for research. I just wanted to read a little bit of that. I was trying to find exactly what 
General Flynn said to talk about it. Oh, there's stuff about Buddha in the prayer. Wow. St. Germain, and we'll go figure that will be in there. Wow. I'll, I'll have to send you the link to the thing it's for research. Devotions to Lord Krishna, the Maha Mantra with Bajans. I don't know what that says. I did that. Oh, they're saying Harry Krishna over and over again. There's some serious evil stuff in there. I'm sorry. Let me let you get a word in while I help a customer. How are you doing, sir? Good, How are you? Brother Bill, who's always on the go at work or at the gym. <laughs> yeah, he's taking care of customers while we're talking to him. It's awesome. <laughs> yeah, if they bring Flynn down here to Rhode Island, I'm going to confront him. Because uh, the Republican Party was talking about bringing Flynn to Rhode Island. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Half the people on that, oh man, the whole Trump thing, all you know, like with new ages and everything. With everything going on, I can't imagine what's going to happen here, Dan. In 2024, it's going to be uh, wide open. They will be thinking, man, this Seven Sages was a fun program. Yeah, because in 2024, we're going to have a lot to talk about. Yeah. <laughs> Brother Bill works at a gas station up in Boston. Yeah, if we ever get a chance, Dan, to uh, make that trip out there, I'm, we're totally going. Like I told you before, a couple months ago, a few months ago, we'll, we'll just shut down the store and have a spiritual warfare Friday program right there in the store with Brother Bill. That'd be awesome. Yeah. No idea why. Go we'll go live. live we'll go live, live, in, live in Boston. At the gas station. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be cool. Yeah. Be like, uh, the, well, we just leave the store oh, open. And, hey, no, you're live on Spiritual Warfare Friday. Nacho, and I was like, this prayer might not be that bad, but it says Nacho Nanda la 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 la. I, I guess it's Smurfs eating nachos. I don't know. It's. <laughs> Something, something in Hindu or Hindi or whatever. They got some weird stuff going on with that lady, <laughs> Elizabeth Clear Prophet. Yeah. How, how could how could that guy, General Flynn, read this garbage at that church at the Trump rally? That's crazy. Yeah, it is. Half the people uh, Trump's got speaking from, like these uh, so-called pastors, and they're all New Ages, you know, Paul and White and all them, and. And I think he's like, does he know the difference? You know, that's the other question too. Because a lot of people too, a lot of these people who go to these Trump rallies, like they're you know just regular Christians, so they think this is of God, you know. And uh, and I'm like, no, that's not of God. What he crazy is he's a New Age, is infiltrating. Which got to bring we're, uh, we're gonna bring Pastor Dean Odo back on uh, to uh, expose the New Age inside the churches in uh, January. Oh, yeah. that's a good one. In January, he's gonna come back on. Oh, you should get Phil in there. Yeah. Yeah, I had him about a million times. The, uh... Oh, yeah. Um, well, I... I pray that we all make it through this whole, uh, Saturnalia and, uh... Hmm. Winter solstice and... You... Now all these evil, uh, winter holidays... Um, yeah, I hear that, brother. I mean, nasty, probably. It's always sad to see all the emergency vehicles are leaving at um, late nights like tonight. I haven't seen any of today, though, so that's good. I see a lot of them like, gunning off here towards 93. You mm. know what I mean? People mm. leave Boston, they get out of the clubs, and they crash up uh, as they come this way up the highway, you know? Not good. Yeah, it's like the one over... That's because uh, the windy, windy that, roads by your house you were showing. That's because they're all ra- <clears throat> they're all racing home to listen to Spiritual Warfare Friday. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that'd be cool. Yeah, that'd be cool. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and I'll, I'll call it a night and just say, uh, um, Lord Jesus, have mercy on us. Mm, amen to that. Yeah, amen, Bill. Amen. All right, take care, brother. Night, nice talking to you. Good night, Brian. God bless and shalom. Be, be blessed, Bill. Shalom. Shalom. Yeah, yeah, Dan. Um, 
if we're ever up there and you can uh, meet me up in Boston, I'd stick out like a sore thumb, man. I'd be like, how you doing? Welcome to the Boston, you know. We... <laughs> yeah. Could you imagine, could you imagine me buying the cash register? My accent would stick out really, literally like a sore thumb. And then, hey, welcome to Spiritual Warfare Friday. You got Dan Bodoni and Brian Reese. And there's Bill be like, these are my brothers. We're gonna have a we're gonna have a broadcast being projected across the airwaves. Could you imagine? Yeah. And people would be like, We're just gonna sit over here and, and have our uh podcast or you know, like like right on the table, like a cardboard, you know, some kind of magic make boy I hate to use that <laughs> term, but miraculous cardboard box or something, and we'll just be eating our frozen pizzas and stuff and having a just a little shindig right there in Boston gas station. Yeah. That'd be hilarious. I think Slur- that'd be hilarious. The Slurpees and uh, pizzas. That'd be hilarious. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. They had a meet and greet at the had the meet and greet at the Boston gas station with Bill. Yeah. And we'll go to Whataburger. <laughs> yeah, we <laughs> look that Whataburger is it that's like uh, the Good Burger movie. We uh, yeah. I'll never get that Whataburger. I'll never get that opportunity you know, again, I, man. No. I I don't know why he did this. I watched that movie um good burger too yeah that was the stupidest movie i ever seen in my life i i, I shut it off halfway i'm like what oh, no. what's the biggest hype of this they filmed it here in rhode island that's why i watched it oh okay so okay. like i got to see if there's anybody i know and plus the landmarks and all that and like they were dumb and dumber remember that yeah 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 so yeah. like uh but i'm like i can't watch this this is like just like degrading dumbness like it's on a whole lo- lower level that never seen before it's like, wow. And people loved it. I don't know why, but it's crazy. You can mm. put out stupid stuff and make millions of dollars. Yeah, Dan, I think I would never, ever ride a scooter with you across thousands of miles and make a Dumb and Dumber 3 movie. You drive, I just hang on for dear life. I don't think I could do that, Dan. I don't think I could do that. Or nor could I be in a Good Burger, Hamburger, Cadillac, oh, man. you know, convertible, messed up and saying, home with a Good Burger, how can I... Whatever it is, how can I help you or take your order? I couldn't do that, Dan. Yeah, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Dan. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It, but I, I could, I could totally see a visual disturbance. You know, I have the dog on the Dumb and Dumber movie. <laughs> the what was that? Some that big dog with the ears is all like yeah. out of that with cloth. I could see us, you know, you jumping and doing like Dukes of Hazard maneuvers <laughs> in Rhode Island, and I'm vomiting all over the dashboard because I have a hard time riding vehicles. So I can only imagine. And that would be uh, we could do a spiritual warfare Friday in the in the on the car there. That'd be kind of interesting. <laughs> but uh, with but uh, but yeah, if that ever does happen, we are totally going to uh, Boston, and uh, that would be epic. I would think that would be hilarious. I've never yeah. been to Boston. I think that would be an awesome opportunity. It'd be kind of funny. Yeah, and uh, we just comical too. Just all get all of us get together and just hang out, and I think that would be really cool. Oh heck yeah. yeah, that'd be awesome. It's a it's a, that's that's like thousands of miles for me. I mean it's not thousands, but it's a, it's a haul from here. Yeah. <laughs> so And uh yeah, guys, next week uh David Carrico we're gonna be on our regular channel, hopefully. Yeah, we should be all right. I mean well it's only a week suspension, but yeah, we'll be on um uh channel. Over a word this is so dumb, over a phrase I can't say on here, but Yeah, don't say it, Dan. Just yeah. don't say it. They they hit you with a strike <laughs> it's, it's, oh yeah. a ding, I should say, but so guys, yeah, if you got any prayer requests, uh, take a screenshot of this if you can. If you got any prayer requests, you want it read on the air, and uh, everybody pray for you. Truth Radio Show at Outlook.com, or if you just want to get a hold of me for anything, or uh, whatever the case. But in the subject title, put prayer requests. But if it's something else, put that, and uh, you know you can reach us at Truth Radio Show at Outlook.com, and also guys, trust the plan. That's the Bible. And we got a PayPal, Venmo, Cash App, and um, this Ko-Fi thing, too. If you want to support this operation, and uh, it funds our operation in the ministry. It funds the streaming and all that good stuff. So uh, the links are in the description, both on YouTube and Rumble. So thank you guys for contributing. And don't forget, tomorrow night, the Midnight Ride, Saturday night here, 11 p.m. Eastern, John Pounders and David Carrico will be joining us, and Dave will be joining us next week as well. But check out their other awesome programs, FOJC Radio, The Cutting Edge, Remnant Restoration, Pounds is Live, all on NYSTV.org. So thank you for tuning in for the Seven Sages and the Seven Sagas. Remember that? The Seven yeah, Sages but, of Atlantis. <laughs> yeah, that, the, that I don't know who's to fault for that. I guess it was me or Dan. Let's just blame me. Um, Both yeah, check, yeah, the Sagas. 
Yeah. Um, but uh, but don't forget, uh, yeah, make sure you hit the the subscribe button, hit the like button, and also, like Brother Dan said, check out the Midnight Ride. But then also check out FLJC Underground Church. Me and oh, Brother yeah. David are going to have our uh, Cities Lost in Time. It's Karnak Temple of the Long Skulls of the Long Skulls. Karnak Temple of the Long Skulls. Cities Lost in Time is our episode two. It's our it, it's our whole new series, to Underground Church. So check that out. It's come, uh, I'll have the link and everything be squared up tomorrow. So uh, keep an eye out for that. And I hope everybody joins us for 9 p.m. Eastern time on Sunday night. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. So, all right, guys, from me and Brian. So uh, God bless Shalom. And we'll see you next week, God willing. So you are the resistance. <laughs>